All right, we are back with another episode of Speedruns from the Crypt, the bi-weekly horror hotfix on the GDQ show. Uh, I will say really quick before we begin that Awesome Games Done Quick 2022 is live uh, this Sunday. It's coming up right almost immediately. I think it's like, what, uh, four days. So uh, it's going to be starting at 11 a.m. Eastern. So come see a week of speedruns here on Games Done Quick Twitch channel or go to gamesonquick.com for more info. I hope that you're all having a wonderful night. Hope you're all doing well. So, the topic of tonight, uh, I'll, oh yeah, there we go. We have the, uh, I was looking at the little graphic. I always think they're over here. I hope they're over here because I'll be pointing at something if they're not. But the topic of tonight is, I guess, un underappreciated sequels. I definitely enjoy games that are a bit more against the grain, games that don't get as much love. Because honestly, there's a lot that can be found in them, and you can kind of unearth some gems you don't know that you would expect. And I know in particular that these two games tonight both have had uh, significant changes, uh, not only to the run, but just on the grind, I suppose. Uh, there's a lot of new times when coming, and there's a lot more competition than you would expect in some games. Anyway, to open things up, we're going to be going with Mike Wave doing Resident Evil 3 Remake. So take it away. Hi, everyone. My name is Mike. I go by uh, Mike Wave on Twitch.tv. And uh, yeah, today, like Dice said, we're going to be doing some uh, no intro standards. So uh, just a real quick explanation real fast. About half a year ago or so, uh, we decided to make a no intro category for this game. Because if you've played this game before, you know the intro is like really bad if you're trying to replay the game. It's like five minutes long of just holding forward and skipping cutscenes, and you have to do it every time you reset. And we're like, okay, we don't want to do this anymore. So we start the run now at the subway. So the run now is like low 40 minute range now. And it's a lot, lot better now. Like pretty much everybody agrees the run is like so much better now. So yeah, we're gonna be doing some uh, no intro standard today, which is the main category. Uh, it's basically we're doing new game standard, but we're just starting at the subway. So things just go a lot faster. And I'm gonna go ahead and get ready to load a save file right here. Uh, if you guys, I'm gonna count it down right now. We're go on go. So yeah. three, two, one, go. All right. So I edited this save file just now. I'm gonna go ahead and start the run by grabbing this herb right here. I don't normally do this when I am trying to go for record. But the beginning of this run is very, very RNG heavy, as you guys will see, most like. Hopefully not, hopefully everything goes okay. But we kind of want that herb as a backup. So starting things out, we're just gonna go ahead and get past some of these zombies here real fast. I'm gonna be doing some very specific dodges right here. That's like the main mechanic in this game to get around. It's what separates it a lot from uh, Resident Evil 2 Remake. You can kind of just dodge everywhere. And it's a lot faster if you're dodging in the triggers in comparison to walking or running. I'm gonna go ahead and blow myself up with this barrel because Jill, uh, who is the main character in this game, like Claire in Resident Evil 2, runs faster when you're in caution. So uh, we want to get ourselves into caution as quick as possible because we just go a little bit faster. It saves a lot of time throughout the run. And as you see right here, I'm kind of just dodging into enemies. This is actually the most optimal way of getting around in this game. We call that a chain dodge. I'm gonna do one right here as well. I'm kind of just dodging into enemies. And then right as the cooldown ends in between the dodge, I do a perfect dodge. And we're gonna go into this room after grabbing that hose real fast, grab that grenade, get past this guy. All right, we got some good RNG there, that's good. So this is like arguably the most RNG part of the game right here is uh, downtown. It's where we reset most of our runs. There's a lot of RNG with the enemy placement. I'm gonna grab this handgun ammo here real fast. Things are moving around very fast. Oh man, uh, all right, nice, nice, nice. We got some very, very good RNG. I'm so thankful right now. Okay. Ah, uh, that guy was a sleeper. That's really unfortunate. Okay, well, good thing we grabbed that herb. So yeah, as you can see, because we have to go around and caution, we're basically like one hit the entire time. So uh, yeah, the herb makes things a little bit safer for us. All right. So we basically finished the first part of the game, which is us getting that fire hose real fast. I'm gonna grab this bolt cutter to go into the next area right here. Um, I see someone in chat asking if this run is glitchy. Uh, it is not actually. It is probably the least broken Resident Evil game. There are literally no out of bounds in this game that we have found thus far. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and do another chain dodge right here. Cool on this dog. If we get lucky, oh, that's really unfortunate, man. Uh, the game is not being so nice now. Not being nice right now. Okay. All right. Very good. Okay. 
Normally that dog does not do that. Okay. So we're gonna be going into this area right now. Oh, he body blocked me, that's kind of unfortunate. Yeah, as you can see, we kind of just dodge past like every enemy in this game. Uh, if you've seen a lot of Resident Evil 2 remake runs, you know that the best way to get around in this game is just holding forward and uh, shooting enemies in the head of like your character's pistol. It is not so in this game. Uh, in this game, oh, okay. In this game, it is faster to just dodge into everything, basically. <laughs> But yeah, uh, like I was saying earlier, basically no out of bounds or glitches in this category or this game in general, really. All right, I'm gonna use this real fast. So we're going into right now what is probably like the most infamous room in the whole game, which is Deimos. I'm gonna pause this game here real fast so I can use that, use that. All right, I'm in caution still. Okay, so I'm gonna do the strat I normally do here just for safety, even though this is actually technically slower so I can bait that enemy right there. I'm usually in fine after using that herb, but because I got kind of unlucky with that dog. This might screw things up a little bit here. No, we're good, I think. Okay. Cool. I do remember uh, casually, I love the uh, the Drain Demos, although for the yeah. speed run, I, uh, I <laughs> there were definitely- Yeah, in the speed run, this is definitely one of the biggest sources of resets. Uh, these are the Drain Demos. They are these bug enemies that you're seeing right here. I don't know if I'm gonna have to play this one safe. No, I got lucky, good. Yeah, so as you can see, there's a lot of RNG with uh, where these enemies spawn. There's a lot of them. With some proper manips though, we can actually get for this room like relatively safety, uh, safely. Over the year, as we've been running this game, we have kind of begun to understand how their AI works. Uh, it's not that hard to understand actually, and it applies to a lot of enemies in this game. Uh, basically, there is kind of a an unspoken rule in this game with the AI where uh, only one enemy can be aggro to you at a time. So, and then there's kind of like a break, at least for the drain demos, before they can attack you again. So uh, if we bait one enemy into trying to lunge at us or something like that, and then they whiff, it's we have like a little bit of a break period before like another one can come to us to try to attack us. And we basically use that to our advantage to get to each of the levers. I'm gonna go ahead and skip that. Normally, you listen to those radio calls in the run because uh, the IGT pauses actually uh, for those radio calls and we do time this game via IGT, not RTA. So it's kind of silly. We walk around very slowly because the timer is paused. And we here we have Nemi. This is the first time he shows up in the run right here. If you, uh, so there's kind of another thing that you should know about in this run. Actually, hold on, let me hear real fast. He's gonna come kind of early. Right, nice. Yeah, we kind of just let him run towards us and then dodge that. But yeah, uh, I forgot what I was saying right now. <laughs> There's so many things. There is so much to explain at this run. It is a very, uh, it is a run that has a lot of depth that you would not know with how the AI and stuff works. So one thing I can explain right here uh, is what DA is. So DA is basically the difficulty of the game. Like basically every modern RE has it. It's basically like the difficulty changes based on the player's performance. I'm gonna do another chain dodge right here. Hopefully this works. Nice. Ooh, that was close. Okay. So yeah, uh, the difficulty of the game goes up and down based on how the player is performing. And by far the biggest thing that impacts it is how many perfect dodges you're doing. It goes up by a number value of 200 every time you perfect dodge, which is a lot actually. Like picking up items will raise it by like 50 maybe. So. A perfect dodge is like four times that basically. And it goes up in increments of a thousand. And right now we have it at six. This is kind of low actually for this point of the game. Luckily though, this game has many like scripted sequences that like kind of reset the difficulty, which makes it kind of easy to manage compared to other games. All right. So really quick, uh, yeah. I have rapid fire and also reminder. Reminder, uh, you were going to talk about, I think, Nemesis. And I'm assuming yeah. probably how his AI works. I know you're looking down on the ground during that point. Yeah, so as you can see, uh, if we basically point our camera down away from him, I'm going to do another chain dodge right here. Nice. If we point our camera away from Nemesis or at the floor like this, as you're seeing me do, let me double. There's some RNG at this point. Nice. Of course. Yeah. So uh, if we point our camera down, then you can see like Nemi is just kind of like slowly following us. Normally he is like, he has this rule that he will teleport in front of the player. 
if uh, you are looking directly in front of you, but by just looking at him or looking at the floor or something like that, he won't do anything. He just like will slowly follow you and not do anything. And that's kind of how we manip his AI into like leaving us like alone. And now we are officially done of downtown, basically. Uh, that is the worst part of the game, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, it was a wild, frantic sequence yeah. of events, but uh, I think we do get a bit more chill now, because I know it's just the Nenny chase. Yeah. I'm going to be so, safe right here, shoot that. Normally, in a run, I do not shoot that box, but then there's some RNG with, with you can hit you here while you're trying to open this shut, like this grate right here, as we're going into the, the sewer segment. Yeah. Right. I know uh, we have the, the yeah. Gammas coming up. Yeah, the Gammas are a... Uh, if you play this game casually or like just tried to learn it, I know a lot of people who start learning this game have a lot of problem with the Gammas. They can be very, very tricky. Uh, we're basically just going to dodge past all of them. They're basically not... They're basically super, super scr uh, scripted, basically, and how their AI works. So, uh, like, the dodge timing to get past them is, like, the same every single time. They're not like the zombies in downtown who are just, like, in random spots. So you just have to, like, go with the flow, kind of, of how it works. And also, our difficulty gets, like, reset right here. So, it's ba like, the sewer segment is basically the same every single time. As you can see, I've been picking up items throughout the run. I'm going to pick up this second grenade right here that we're going to need for the first boss fight coming up in a little bit. So here's the first gamma. Like, there are these, like, white frog things. And if I do this correctly, nice. That's one dodge. You get past that one. They kind of do this tail sweep as you try to get past them. There we go. I dodge into that one to get past them like that. And here we are. We're already past the first two. We're going to grab this battery, which should go on that slot. Yep. So I can just instantly use it. We kind of barely have to use the inventory in this game uh, because we just have it set up in a way that like we... We don't really need to screw around with it too much because the inventory in this game is notoriously very bad with inputs. So we want to reduce how often we're in there, basically. So we basically dodge past where that gamma spawns. And right here, I'm going to try to do this precise dodge. Ah, I screwed up. That one is tricky. That one's been giving me some problems recently. Okay. But luckily, we have that herb to help us out. And we're going to keep moving on here. Normally, I chain dodge into that gamma. I like, uh, I kind of just know exactly when he's going to do the tail swipe, but that timing's been giving me problems recently. Right. Oh, yeah, something something I forgot to explain earlier. Again, there is so much to explain of this run. So there if you is. dodge in this game, if you dodge in this game, um, you kind of have iframes for like a brief moment, and we can actually use that to get past these like scripted like staggers that are supposed to impact Jill. And you can also get past, like, zombie lunges as well, if you time it correctly. And I use that to, like, avoid some of these, like, staggers that should be happening just because it saves a little bit of time. Right here, Carlos is going to call us again. And we're going to be moving on to the first boss fight, which is going to be Nemi 1. Basically, every boss fight in this game is a Nemi. All right, so there is a zombie here who can be a little bit troublesome in front of this shutter. I'm going to take the safe way around him. Yeah. In a run, I normally dodge directly into that zombie, but he is extremely random, and I don't have an herb right now, so I'm not even I'm not even playing around with him. And I'm going to set up another chain dodge right here. I'm going to try to wake this zombie up, dodge into this spot. There we go. Nice. And now we are basically just moving into the first boss fight of the game, which is Nemi. This is by far the easiest of the four. Uh, it's basically the same every single time. We're just gonna like kill them really fast with some grenades that we've been picking up. The grenades in this game are like extremely powerful. They are so powerful, in fact, that I think the devs only put in like five of them or something into the whole game. And these two are by far the fastest ones to pick up. As you can see, we're kind of just doing some precise movement to get from point A to point B right here. Very precise dodges. Yeah, I, say, I see someone in chat saying this is a very reset heavy game. It is. It is extremely reset heavy. I have like 5,500 resets on this category alone thus far. And uh, if you want to get record, you got to spend a lot of time grinding it because, yeah, uh, I did not intend for that to happen. Okay. Really quick for the boss fight, um, yeah. I'm just going to say I'm going to preempt this. I'm going to have like a rapid fire series of questions because I have yeah. a lot of questions about this game. But do uh, yep, go for course. the boss fight first. Also, I see run is live, chat is pre-recorded. Because uh, someone asks us to run live. But I know that person, so they're probably doing the meme. I messed up. I got lucky. Okay, 
What a weird fight. So I was supposed to reload before that fight and I didn't. Classic error on my part. But I got lucky in crit him, so it's not a big deal. That is actually dodge your RNG in a run. That saves you like two seconds normally, which is huge if you're grinding for record. Okay. That's the first boss dead. All right, you can go ahead and ask those questions now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, first things first, because I know this game uh, was really ran for a bit, and then it wasn't like everyone dropped it, but now it's been coming back, and I know you've been bringing yeah. it back. Why is everyone coming back to RA3? Um, I think a lot of people are coming back to this game, because frankly, a lot of people are getting burnt out on Resident Evil 2 Remake, which is still like by far the most popular. Uh, it's not only the most popular speedrun uh, for the RE franchise, it's like one of the most popular games on speedrun.com. And I think a lot of people are going like, all right, I'm getting kind of like, burnt out on this game. And hey, I haven't checked out Resident Evil 3 in a while. I wonder how that's going. And like, they're seeing like, wow, this run is like crazy. There's so much stuff going on, you know? Like a lot of tech. It's very, very different from uh, T-Make right. in that regard. Like very, very, like just a ton of depth with like the dodge mechanic. It just adds so much to the game. And now with the no intro category, we don't have to do the first five minutes. We can kind of just focus on like actual gameplay. That was I my think that's next question yeah. actually. So um, for no intro category, what need you guys to decide? Hey, uh, I don't want to do the five minutes for Jill's in her apartment, and we're just kind of. Uh, I think you just go to the beginning of the subway, right? Yeah. When did that uh, come so into effect? I think that was around April or May of uh, 2021, if I recall correctly. Let me just do this dodge real fast. Okay. Of course. Yeah, uh, I think we. It's been something we've always been talking about, but we didn't know how to implement it. And then me and a, another friend of mine, a runner named uh, Casal, sure. who has the record right now and uh, no intro assisted. We started like coming up with this idea of like using the, the trainer that is available for the game. Uh, we found out you can reset the IGT, basically, and set it back to zero, and then basically keep it locked while you are a uh, while you were making a save. And we're like, okay, can we use that to like maybe set up a save wherever we want, and then we can effectively set up no intro with using that method, right? And we finally like tried it out, and after overcoming a couple of bugs like we ran into problems where like the zombies weren't aggroing correctly when leaving the subway when after resetting the igt or uh yeah you had iframes or something like that for a whole minute or something like that we found out a proper way to set it up so now uh we have like a, a very good way of setting it up where our igt starts at zero at the subway so we're like okay we can just do the run like this from now on like why don't we and then we had a vote on it i think like 95 percent of people in the community voted yes uh, for no intro, and we're like, all right, there it is. It's history now. Now the most important question, yeah. what made you want to get, uh, I guess, more into RE3 make? Um, I know you did some GDQ. Uh, hold on, let me just make sure I time. I'm sorry. Of course, don't <laughs> worry about sure it, I don't worry. I have died to this rolling head before here. <laughs> I have the record in like two categories in this game, and I have died to that rolling head. Uh, so yeah, um, I tried to get back into RE2 Remake back in the day, uh, and while I loved the game casually, I wasn't a huge fan of the speedrun. Um, I come from a background where I, a lot of people know me for running uh, Resident Evil 4, which is like by far one of the hardest like RE speedruns right. out there. Just very, very uh, tech-heavy game. And uh, I, while RE2, I like, I enjoy watching the speedrun for it. I want like, yeah, you know, this isn't for me. It's just a lot of uh, a lot of just holding W. The knife is very very broken, so it makes the boss fights like kind of un like uninteresting for me. I think that's a, that was a very common complaint for a lot of people. And then in this game, you don't have a broken knife. The knife is like very very bad in this game, as per RE tradition. And I'm like, oh wow, so there's like actual like boss fight strats in this game. Oh, that's cool. And the more I kept playing it, um, I wasn't a huge fan of it at first, casually, but the more I kept routing the speedrun, uh, I was there from the very beginning. I'm like, man, this, this run is really cool, and I decided to just like, keep doing it. I was having a lot of fun. And once we came around to no intro in 2021, I'm like, oh man, this is awesome, actually. This is like super fun. Like, very, very underrated speedrun, I would argue. So right now, uh, we're gonna go ahead and go into uh, the RPD as Carlos yes. here uh, in, in this very, very good looking drip right here, the noir drip. You guys may recognize this, this is the, uh, I am using visual mods for this game. We allowed him for uh, the no intro categories because we feel like this game did not get enough love in the cosmetic department, especially compared to 2Make. Like Carlos legit only gets like two, like I think he gets like two hairstyles and that's it. That's the only thing you can change about Carlos's like appearance. And we're like, ah oh, man, that sucks. 
And we decided to just allow visual mods because they, the more we labbed it, the more we realized they had like no impact in the game. So that's why I'm using the Noir mod for Carlos. Not to mention because it looks way better on him than, uh, than on Leon. Just like that's a fact, you know. But yeah, the Carlos section, very, very different from the Jill sections. Uh, in that Carlos kind of sucks gameplay wise, like frankly. Uh, so while Jill has the, you know, the iconic dodge mechanic, which is like super, super useful, um, all Carlos gets is like a shoulder press, like the shoulder bash he can do. It's like a baby little dash he can do that uh, you can use to punch enemies. And it's really bad. <laughs> uh, so his segments are a, quite a bit tougher, I would say, than Jill. All right, I'm gonna make sure I do this directly right here. Just need to move those items around. So yeah, uh, we kind of joke around now that the Carlos segments in this game are basically like the RA2 segments in this game, not just because we're in the RPD, but it's like, all right, it's time to go play RA2 for a little bit because we don't have a dodge anymore. We just kind of just hold forward. But as you're gonna see, we use the dot, the uh, shoulder press mechanic a little bit. Like I'm gonna use it to stun this guy right here so I can get past him. Gonna get past this guy. We're gonna grab a flash here, which we're gonna need in a little bit for the upcoming room. So as I was explaining earlier, the AI in this game follows a one lunge rule where only one enemy can be like aggro to you at a time, at least most enemies. So I'm gonna use that right here. As you can see, I got past this area. Um, by baiting that enemy that was on the floor into grabbing me, the other zombies were not able to aggro on the Carlos, which basically allows me to traverse the room along with the shoulder press mechanic to stun the enemies. So we're gonna do the next part of RPD right here. This part's pretty scary. I'm gonna grab this key. We're gonna go head back downstairs to grab the battery. I'm gonna kill this guy real fast. Reload the pistol to fix my inventory. And now we're going to use this flash we picked up earlier to get past the enemies here. They're quite a bit harder to get past on the way back. And we have this liquor here to deal with now. This liquor is terrible. He's really, really annoying, as Carlos at least. I kind of messed up my movement there. I'm hoping I'll be fast enough to get past the enemies here. Got that battery. Now we're going to head back. Please don't aggro early. Uh oh. Oh boy. Falcon punched this liquor so he doesn't bug us. And now we're gonna move on to the worst room in the game, in my opinion. I hate this room. So hopefully it will not give me any trouble. And this is the shower. The showers have killed countless runs. As you're gonna see, the one lunge rule comes into great effect in this room. Uh, yeah, bless real fast. Nice. As you can see, because only one zombie can aggro to you at a time, you can kind of just do a precise line there to get past everybody. Huh. That room is scary. That room is terrifying. It has killed yeah. so many good runs. <laughs> because the zombies just like to do whatever they want sometimes, and they behave there, which is good. So now we're back as Jill. We're going to go to our second boss fight, which is Nemi 2. Uh, Nemi 2 and Nemi 3 are by far the two hardest parts of this run. Very, very precise strats that we have to do. Uh, there is a shot we have to do at the beginning of this uh, upcoming segment right here where we knock down Nemi. Oh. Got to dump those two items in the box real fast. And as you can see, because we did not pick up the shoddy in the grenade launcher earlier, they just spawn here so we can pick them up like super fast. We're going to get past a couple more enemies here and head on over to the boss arena. But yeah, there's a very precise shot we have to do at the beginning of Nemi 2 to knock him down. And if we don't get it, like, you lose a ton of time. Like, I have lost so many runs. Like, so many, like, record pace runs. Like, very, very good runs to this shot. It is very, very precise. But it makes the fight way faster. So we're basically going to knock him down with a flame round shot so we can expose his weak point and then just immediately do a ton of damage to get him into the second phase, like, immediately. So... We have this scripted part right here. So we just hold W for a little bit here. Yeah, this boss is scary, man, but it's all good. The run's not legit, so I'm just gonna reset the checkpoint if I don't get it. Ah, uh, I was too late. Like that right there would be a dead run. <laughs> so I just gotta try again. There we go. That's what's supposed to happen. That is a tough shot. 
As you can see, I have thousands of hours in this game and I still don't get it every single time. All right, nice. As you can see, we're gonna get him into the second phase immediately. Use that flame round to stun him so we, we like get past that animation, that scripted event he usually does where he just like yells. And you're gonna see, I'm gonna do a second shot here in a moment. I'm gonna do five shots on his heart right here and intentionally shoot his head to keep him above 40% HP. Nice. That's gonna knock him down again. All right, nice. I got some good RNG here. Oh. I was supposed to shoot him there, but it's okay. Nice. That's Nummy 2. And now we're going to go back to playing as Carlos for a little bit in the hospital. The hospital is the second most random part of the whole run. Because again, we're playing as Carlos, our, our buddy Carlos, who uh, has a, a puny little like shoulder press that is not very good for handling some of these rooms. But if we get lucky, it'll be fine. All right, so as you can see, Jill has been infected by Nemi there. I realize I haven't been explaining the story to anybody. Uh, Nil Jill is just running away from Nemi the entire time. She buddies up with Carlos. In that fight, she gets infected with the virus that is turning everybody into zombies. And because uh, Carlos, uh, you know, really likes Jill, has uh, special feelings for her. We're going to go ahead and uh, try to get a vaccine for her, even though that's not how vaccines work, as most people will tell you. I'm going to kill this zombie right here. So this room right here is like the first, like, that room is terrible on the way back. It's not too bad on the, like, while we're, like, getting our stuff. But on the way back, that room is a common run killer because of the random zombie positioning. So we're going to hope we don't get too unlucky on the way back. There are more bad rooms, though, in the hospital, let me assure you. So, yeah, we're basically just, like, fetching items here. Got to grab this locker key here real fast. Question, why isn't this run legit? So, with the, with the rules we have set up for no intro, we require all runners on PC to show a timer, like an in-game timer of the game on their screen at all times. Just to make sure that, like, you know, everything is, like, set up correctly. And uh, the IGT, when you reload a checkpoint, basically resets what your IGT was to when the save was made. So we do not allow anybody to like reset auto like checkpoints or anything like that, unfortunately, in this game. So like, uh, you know, if you get screwed, you get screwed. That's just the way it is, unfortunately. This is the timer in this game kind of sucks, but it is what it is, you know. All right, so right here, we're gonna try to get this key pass. Hopefully I don't open the other locker. I open the other locker, that kind of sucks. The interact fields in this game are not very well made. Like you will accidentally interact some stuff that you did not intend to sometimes. And here we're going to be introduced to a new enemy, which are the hunters. These were not in RE2, but they're like a kind of a classic RE enemy. They're very, very dangerous in this run, but there's only like, there's only two that we are really concerned with. And they are the two hunters that are in this room coming up. They're the only hunters that could potentially like meme you basically. All right, so. As you see, I'm kind of like shoulder pressing into these doors just so like I can kind of open them fast. So the double hunter room is like one of, like one of the only truly completely RNG rooms in the game. I'm going to do this manip here for this hunter. All right. I'm going to bait that enemy attack right there. Grab that. Falcon punch him back so he doesn't hit us. All right, not too bad. We're gonna stun that zombie right there. Grab that ammo and drop back down. So now we basically uh, are grabbing the, the vaccine sample finally after grabbing all those items. Uh, unfortunately, like we basically have to do three rooms back to back that are like extremely random, which why, is why like this is another common reset point. Oh man, I got really unlucky. Uh, that's unfortunate. Yeah, there's nothing I could have done about that. As Carlos, at least there's nothing you could do about that. Grab another herb here just to be safe. Yeah, that was unfortunate, but it's it's okay. I've actually gotten the record once before. <laughs> well, while that same zombie judoed me, as we like to call it, where they kind of just throw you on the floor. <laughs> but yeah, it is what it is. 
So now we're gonna be finally grabbing this vaccine that we want for Jill. Yeah, I forgot to set... By the way, I apologize. I was going to play the game in English. Uh, for those who are wondering, the reason I'm playing in Japanese is because that's what I normally play in. Uh, Japanese saves two seconds in this game at the end of the run. I was going to play in English for you guys, but I completely forgot. So again, I apologize if you oh, wanted good. to hear... Uh, if you guys wanted to hear some classic lines like, I'm goddamn Nathaniel Bard and all that. <laughs> I, I do love the English dub in this game, like a lot. We can say it's an excuse to play yeah. RE3. I know this game goes on sale pretty often. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so now we are getting into the auto scroller segment of the game, which, uh, which is the hospital siege section. We basically just got to kill these zombies that are coming into the hospital to defend Jill. This part is like pretty, pretty easy. We call it the cabin sequence of the game in reference to RE4, which has its infamous like cabin sequence. Luckily, the cabin sequence in this game is like very, very easy to. It's basically like an auto scroller. You just got to kill the enemies and uh, you have a lot of time to kill them. So it's not too bad. It's basically just like a four and a half minute, like just kill the enemies and wait. As you can see, I, all the enemies in the sequence have like low health compared to normal zombies. So like they die within like four shots or something. And they die in three headshots from a pistol. Yeah, a lot of people were talking about Carlos, Japanese voice. I love it, personally. He's my favorite part of the Japanese dub. Because he sounds like a JoJo character, basically. It's kind of sick. It fits the character very, very well. And yeah, as you see right here, we just wait for the enemies to just come in and shoot them in the head. Pretty chill, actually. I'm very glad it's not RNG. Like the uh, the cabin sequence in RE4 is like notoriously one of the most like random parts of that game in the run. In this game, though, you just kill enemies and wait. It's not too bad, and it's kind of late in the run, so it's not a big deal. I don't mind it personally. And I act, the enemies always come in in the same sequence as well here. So right here, I'm gonna kill these two enemies right here. And now the lights are gonna turn off in this scripted event. And the hunter is gonna bust through this door. And we're just gonna sit here. He can't actually do anything if you just stand here, as you can see. And we're just gonna kill him with a grenade real fast. There it is. Kill some more enemies. Yeah, just a very, very chill part of the run. If this were a uh, in AGDQ or something, I would tell you guys this is where the donos happen, you know, and stuff. Right. <laughs> I just have to make sure that these uh, enemies are just dying really fast. That's it. There's one hiding behind here. Hello, hello ma'am. Okay. <laughs> So actually, uh, another question, uh, you know, given that yeah. um, RE3 has become more accessible to people to run, um, how easy would yeah. you say it's to, like, to learn a run of this? Um, it's actually not too hard. We have a lot of safety strats in place right now uh, that people can use. Uh, this, this is a game that's kind of easy to pick up, like a lot of other uh, RE games. It's easy to pick up, but very, very hard to master. Like, the record in this game is extremely optimized at this point, at least for this category. This category has a more optimized record, I would say, than New Game Plus. I say that as someone who has the New Game Plus record. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's not too bad to learn. There's a couple of tricky parts, though, like the sewers. I know a lot of newer players tell me they have a lot of problems with the sewers. Like, the gammas can be very, very annoying to learn how to dodge. But uh, it's the same every single time. So, like, it's a, it's a case of, like, once you learn how to do it, you kind of never forget it. So it's not that bad. Uh, and there's a lot of, again, safety strats you can do. I encourage a lot of people to pick up this game. It's very, very fun and rewarding to get good at this game. The The movement is extremely rewarding in this game when you do it right. All right, there's gonna be a hunter that spawns right now. And as you can see, the enemies here, when you kill them, if you just turn your camera around and it turned back, they just disappear. 
kind of a little funny effect. And the cabin sequence should be ending in a second here. All the enemies are dead. As you see, it always ends, ends at the same time, basically. There we go. And now we're just going to go ahead, put in this detonator, shoot that. And now we just wait. We just wait. But yeah, this is like the only like true auto stroller kind of left in the game, basically. And yeah, we just wait for the timer to go down, basically. All right. And that is the end of Carlos. <laughs> so we don't have to play as Carlos anymore, thankfully. All right, so there's gonna be a tricky dodge I do here after these cutscenes right here, where I'm gonna try to pick up the pistol while dodging into the door. Uh, I didn't quite get the optimal dodge. That's fine though. Now we're gonna be moving on to the warehouse segment. So we're coming up towards like, we're probably around like 70-ish percent of the way for the run. We're back as Jill. Uh, after we skip, I like, guess, uh, swap characters in this game, we're kind of back to full HP. So with Jill, our goal right now is to basically get into caution as fast as possible again to save time with the movement speed so the very first thing i'm going to do here after interacting with this this elevator right here this asset from re2 remake is i'm going to swap to the pistol get rid of some of this ammo that's in my inventory we just need to go back down to 12. there we go All right. And what I'm going to do here that I don't normally do in the run is I'm going to pick up this herb as safety because there are no heals inside the warehouse. The, the warehouse is very, very unforgiving in a run. There are no heals inside the warehouse. There are no checkpoints. It's pretty bad. All right. And we're going to pick up our second pouch here. We picked one up earlier. I messed that up. That's fine. Though. The expand our inventory. We're going to need it. So the warehouse part of this game, we're trying to track down Nikolai, who is like the main villain of the game. Uh, he's like this Russian dude who is basically just trying to kill us, kind of. I'm going to go ahead and try to shoot this pale head over here. Nice. I got good RNG. He bit me a little bit more than I would like to. That's fine, though. Okay. So we're gonna intentionally take that bite while we're waiting for the lift to get back into caution as fast as possible. If we do it correctly, we don't lose any time. I'm gonna do a two dodge here. We're gonna pick up that first fuse, then dodge into the ladder here. Uh, someone is saying, why get rid of ammo? So this part of the game has very, very tight inventory and we basically don't have enough room to pick up all the fuses with that pistol ammo in our inventory. So we basically just have to get rid of it without going into the inventory. Nice. Do a little chain dodge into that scientist, and we clip directly into the shelves here. You're going to see me pausing like this a little bit at times, because this game has a lot of uh, scripted elements to where the camera is going to turn. So it's a little bit faster for us to actually pause the game for a little bit, just to fix our camera. Okay. We're gonna wait for this lift. So again, this is basically like a fetch quest part. We have to get these fuses to like basically power up the lift at the end of the segment. So we can go chase Nikolai into Nest 2, which is like the lab. Like every RE game has to end on a lab sequence. This game is a little bit brazen about it by calling it Nest 2 after RE2 Remake had the nest. But avoid these zombies just dodging into these scripted like sequences right here. They're like these scripted little parts right here where like an enemy will spawn or something like that and Jill will get staggered. So right here, I'm hoping I do this chain dodge correctly. This is kind of difficult. So we have this room right here. Nice. And now I have to actually get rid of that. Nice. Oh boy. Okay. Okay, buddy. That hunter almost got me, but we're good. All right. 
All right, nice. The pale head was not a mean. That pale head has killed many runs. The pale head in that room could magically be near the door and grab you on the way out. It's kind of annoying when it does happen. Nice, perfect. As you saw, we basically just dodged past those tentacle heads right there. What, that's what we call them, basically, that enemy. So we're done at the warehouse sequence now. We're going to be moving on to the final part of the game. So here we have Tyrell. You barely saw him, but he's like Carlos's buddy who's also helping us. He's unfortunately going to die at the end of this hallway, but he's going to give us a little boost here. So you are supposed to walk here, but we can actually just dodge here. And if you do it correctly, you can just end up in front of him like this, and then he can just push you, which is actually faster. And we're going to use that to get to the end of this room real fast. And then use a fire round to basically cancel out that dialogue. There we go. So I am going to pick up this herb right here. I normally don't do this, but again, marathon strats, you know. So we're grabbing that real fast. And I'm going to go ahead and fix up my inventory right here. Did not mean to do that. All right. Okay. So we pick up this item here. That'll go in the first slot. So yeah, we are in the nest now, which is like the lab where like they are developing a bunch of bioweapons. And we're just basically trying to find a vaccine now because the US government said they are going to nuke Raccoon City like very, very soon, unless we can get a copy of the vaccine. That's what we're trying to do right now. So we are doing yet another fetch quest basically where we are trying to build a vaccine using two parts that are scattered throughout the lab. This sequence is like pretty, pretty short, but also very, very hectic. Uh, it isn't very RNG though, luckily. The enemies should usually behave the same. Keyword usually. I did not mean to do that. Okay. So something you may have realized if you played this game before, you would normally go for that first vaccine part that was in that room earlier there first, but we have actually found it is more optimal to go the long way here and grab this part first and then grab the other part on the way back. You're going to see why in a little bit. But it is a lot more optimal, though. All right. All right, so here we have what we like to call the orgy room. Uh, if I'm allowed to say that term. Uh, we call it that because as you're going to see in a moment, there are a lot of enemies in this room. All right. And with some precise shots right here and some precise dodging, we get past it unscathed. Whew. All right, that's a scary, scary room right there. That room is basically the reason I grabbed that herb. Okay. And now we're going to be moving on to the segment right here with the... Hunters, there's three hunters we have to kill here. I'm gonna use some precise fine shots here to kill these hunters very, very fast. Oh, I did not mean to do that. I got kind of unlucky with that hunter right there. He usually dies from those two mine rounds, but uh, can't always have what you want. I actually got to do something here that should be a little bit more optimal. So now we're gonna do two dodges into this room to have these enemies not grab us. As you can see, there's kind of a another unspoken rule of the AI in this game. I messed up there. Where uh, they basically are not allowed to aggro to you upon entering a room for like about a second or so. So we basically exploit that here by just going in really, really fast so we can get past the room without the AI waking up. We're gonna grab our second part here. Nice. Okay, very good. Okay. That's that room. Again, some very, very precise shots. And we're going to be moving on now after we get our vaccine here to the Nemi 3 fight. As you can see, this right here is the reason why we play in Japanese, by the way. After that voice line, you were immediately allowed to use the, uh, immediately allowed to combine the parts. And normally with the other languages, you have to wait around two seconds. So the entire reason we play in Japanese is just for that voice line right there, because that voice line is bugged. It's very, it kind of sucks. 
And yeah, now we are moving on to Nemi 3. Nemi 3 is the hardest part of the entire run, in my opinion. Uh, it's pretty consistent, though, if you know what you're doing, but it is very, very hard. Okay. So, we're gonna be starting this fight by just stunning him, basically, with flame rounds. And by using a combination of the flame rounds in the mine rounds, we are basically just gonna get, like, keep him stun locked the entire time. All right, so. And also a lot of shotgunning as well. Five. I got kind of unlucky there for crit. So as you can see, we're basically just like keeping him stun locked the entire time. So we can just do a ton of damage on him. Just pump him full of damage. He's gonna do this tantrum here. We're just gonna stun him again. And just keep shotgunning. And we're gonna knock him down again. And more shotgun. And he's dead. There we go. That is the hardest fight in the whole game. And that went very, very beautifully. That was very good. That was, that okay. was really good. I don't think he even got up. No, he is just unlocked. We just bully him in that fight, basically. <laughs> it's very hard, though. That strat, I make it look easy. It is very, very difficult, though. Like, that is by far, like, one of the hardest things to learn in this whole run. We actually recommend that people use an easier strat where, he, like, he jumps on to, uh, he jumps on to, like, the, the whole, like, those tanks or whatever to take damage because it's just, it's so much easier. But, uh, that is more optimal, though, because you just unlock him and bully him the whole time, and he just dies really fast. All right, I got good RNG here. So I'm just going to shoot these bulbs right here real fast, and we're going to knock them down. So what we're going to do right here is we are basically just going to try and push in all these power cells in one cycle. We don't want him to get up at all. He is going to get up, but by the time he gets up, everything is going to be done. And you can do this with some, like, pretty precise movement right here. As you see, just dodging from power cell to power cell. I'm gonna do a triple dodge right here. And just hold E, and that'll automatically do it. All right, nice. And he's dead now. So there is actually a lot of RNG in this fight. Uh, this fight is obviously much tougher on Nightmare and Inferno. If this is like the hardest fight in the game then. On standard though, the fight is easy, but it's very, very RNG heavy. If he opens up with the wrong attack, you lose like five seconds, which like if you're trying to get the record, that is basically like a run killer. So it's kind of, it is kind of like terrifying. Like if you're trying to get record in this game or like just a top three time in general, I would say, you get to this fight and then he opens up with like the wrong attack. It's just like, oh no, you it's just such a huge time loss. It's around five seconds or so, which is a lot if you're going for record. That is how optimized the time is at this point. So yeah, now we have, uh, people were pointing it out in chat, the scariest part of the whole run, which is shooting Nikolai. So we are basically trying to stop him. He's like, he's been sending Nemi after us and all that and giving us a lot of trouble. And we have to take care of him once and for all with one shot. We have one shot to deal with him. Believe it or not, I have missed a shot before on a run that was going to be record. And a lot of people don't stop bugging me about it, but it's happened to everybody at this point. But I we're not going to miss this time, guys. Right now. Yeah, yeah, we're not, we're not going to. It's, it's not going to happen now. There we go. We got him, and that's time. I'm sorry, I didn't point that out before. Hey, time. That, that counts. <laughs> yeah, that's it. We got out, guys. There were no cutscenes, but we got out. <laughs> so yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed the run so much. GGS. This is an awesome speed game. Uh, if you want to join the community, I recommend joining the RE3R Discord that we have up on speedrun.com on the board. Like plenty of people there that are like gonna help you out with getting started on this run. We have a lot of resources, um, a lot of people to learn from. We're very, very generous in the community. And again, I hope you all enjoyed watching so much. This is an awesome, like no matter how much you think of this game casually, it is an awesome speed game. I assure you, it is an awesome speed game. But yeah, that's all I have for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hey, before you do go, yeah. I want to say one great job on the run. Amazing job. Uh, thank you. It was a good run. Uh, <laughs> two, if you want to see the IGT, uh, go ahead and uh, get to that oh, point. Oh, yeah. 
We'll but, see that right uh, now. Extra questions. One, do you have any shout outs you'd like to give to anyone? Uh, yeah, so a lot of people in the community. Uh, Kasal, who is the assisted record holder, he helped find a ton of strats. Uh, Minotaur, who right now has the... Uh, he, he's my, my rival, kind of. He's the one of the best runners for this game. He also found a ton of useful strats. Uh, we're always like kind of helping each other as much as we're competing. Uh, we're just trying to help each other get better at the game. Uh, Arlen, uh, he found a ton of strats for this game. Uh, my buddy Nevs, who helped us like set up the no intro stuff uh, when we were doing that. Uh, Squirrelies for making the SRT for this game. Uh, it's He's been at our backs the entire time like updating the SRT to work for this game. So we always have the information that we need. Uh, also, Cursed Toast, uh, Nate, uh, who, is the make, who is the guy who wrote almost all of the auto splitters for every modern RE game. He is an awesome guy, super, super dedicated to the community. We could not have done anything without him. Uh, he's a great, great programmer. He helped us, like again, always updating the script when we needed to, that we still rely on to this day. So yeah, those are the guys I want to shout out. And just everybody else in the community, uh, like we could not have gotten the time as low as we did now without you guys. So thank you so much. As well, if anyone wanted to find you on Twitch, where can they find you? Uh, you can find me at twitch.tv slash Mike underscore underscore wave. Two underscores, by the way. Uh, I am usually running this game. Uh, I run other RE games as well. I, I ran a lot of RE4 in the past. Uh, RE1 Remake. I also run the Mass Effect series. Like Mass Effect 2 is one of my all-time favorite games and speedruns. I run a lot of that as well. So if you're into sci-fi RPGs like Bioware stuff, I I'm into that too. I run that as well. And yeah, again, I hope you guys all enjoyed watching the run. All right. Well, thank you once again. Also, I want to acknowledge that uh, yeah. a lot of chat is marveling at your uh, the hours <laughs> at the top right. Oh, this isn't actually... All right. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see this. Uh, hold on. Oh, you guys can't see it. But yeah, it's actually 1,068. It's not 400. Oh, okay. I, I, I've reset my save file multiple times for NG Plus related stuff. So, uh, that makes sense. It's not sense. accurate. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, it's actually like over double this. I played this game All a right. lot. Morning is well, healthy. That being said, uh, before we go to our next run, which is going to be a long run of the night, uh, we're going to be taking a quick wellness break. This is a time to stand up, touch your toes, stretch your legs, do what you need to do. Uh, before we go to that, though, I just want to say that if you're watching this over on YouTube, AGDQ will be live through the 16th, uh, from the 9th to the 16th. So go on twitch.tv slash games done quick if you're interested in looking at the live event. And as always, all revenue after taxes that GDQ earns from subscription and bits this month of January will be donated to PCF. All right, be right back. All right, we are back from the break. Welcome back, everyone. I hope that you enjoyed that amazing run of RE3 Remake. I feel like that is one of the games that, as more as time passes, people might uh, tend to enjoy. Uh, I, I do enjoy a lot of the games that are against screen, like I mentioned, and I know personally I've played games like Dead Rising 4 and The Third Birthday, so I definitely enjoy games that aren't as beloved. And speaking of which, uh, we're going to be doing another game tonight, which is going to be our quote-unquote finale as well, because you may be wondering, oh, hey, we're only doing two games, but this next game is a doozy and it is long. However, there's been a lot of changes that have come around uh, with the advent of technology that this game is definitely, I guess some of the faults aren't as bad as they used to be. That being said, our last game of the night is going to be Silent Hill Downpour with Umbrella Jill. So take it away. Uh, hi, I'm Umbrella Jill. Uh, I mostly speedrun this game and Resident Evil 2 Remake. I play Leon A Hardcore also on Xbox. Um, and then I'm learning Silent Hill 3 on PS2 right now on the normal, normal category. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, my commentator with me today is Oh My Queen, and she also speedruns Silent Hill Downpour, among other games. Hello, everyone. I'm here to support Jill in her awesome run. And uh, I also have a little surprise for Jill. I actually went and fished out the Downpour comic book. So if we need some of those lore drops, we are having them tonight. Yeah, she knows all the lore. <laughs> okay, but that's pretty much it. So um, I was like literally about to put my finger over to hit the one to start the time. I'm not doing a timer though. Okay, so the time starts uh, when the game starts. So I'll count it down. Okay, so three, two, one.
So right at the beginning, we get a super exciting cutscene. <laughs> um, Murphy is a prisoner, as you have probably noticed from the jumpsuit. And, uh, you know, he is, he is going on a little walk, you know, routine walk in the morning. And uh, <laughs> immediately, the first thing that you are going to be wondering is, why are we watching this? Well, the reason why this game is... <laughs> Why are we watching <laughs> The reason why this game is so long is because cutscenes are unskippable. And, you know, uh, this game is so well done that we have to watch the cutscenes every time, and that's why we love the game so much. Quick, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's also true. There's like about 11 minutes worth of cutscenes before gameplay actually starts, and then there's only like one minute of gameplay, and then another cutscene. <laughs> So it's a little annoying having to reset this game, not gonna lie. It's not reset friendly at all, and it's Go not practice friendly Make at all, quick. unfortunately, because hey, this game only has that. one save a uh, slot, match. and you cannot save wherever you want. You have checkpoints, and so sometimes some parts are pretty much impossible to practice because, well, uh, the checkpoint could be too far away or could be in a not very comfortable position and such. So very hard game to optimize from a speedrun point of view. Yeah, and then on top of that, when you load up checkpoints in the game, enemy behaviors and things loading into the game are different from how they are in an actual run. So for example, there's a line that I found that only works, well, it works on the Xbox One, not on the Series X, but then if you're playing it on the Series X, it only works if you load up a checkpoint, but if, if you're in an actual run, the line doesn't work. So when you're practicing stuff on a checkpoint, you have to bear in mind it might not work in an actual run anyway. So it's like you have to like take certain things into consideration when you're practicing from checkpoints. So. Kind of I gotta, I gotta say, I like sleep paralysis comment in chat. All this gameplay is getting in the way of my cutscenes. You're right. You're absolutely right. We are sorry. We apologize. We're gonna try to make the gameplay way quicker. You'll All see. Right, so, uh, really quick, I actually have a couple questions uh, from okay. Brother Jill. One, okay. what made you want to run downpour? Uh, for the memes, uh, I actually had it as a community uh, channel point redemption for me to learn the speed run, and then I started learning, and I was like. Hey, I'm kind of good at this. <laughs> Just kept playing. I'll have one more after this one. But two, did you buy a Series X for Downpour? Uh, I am borrowing a Series X for Resident okay. Evil 2 Remake and Downpour. Okay, so it's one of the reasons you have a Series X. Yeah, it's not mine, though. It's on loan. <laughs> All right, well, that's fair. And I guess that leads into the next thing of why it might be on loan. I know uh, recently you actually, I think you have top two now in Downpour, right? Yeah, or did you I, get had, world record? I had top two previously, but I wanted to get a better time because my other time wasn't like I made a really big mistake because I messed up the bell puzzle in my other run. So there was like a free 30, 30 second time save there. So I was like trying to get a new PB. So at least it would be a little bit more competitive. So, yeah, but I did. Then I did get a new PB. So now I'm like 28 or 29 seconds away from world record. Which she can definitely get. So, chat, tell Jill to not stop playing this game. She has to play Downpour until the end of time. Until until she keeps the world record forever. I had to, I grinded this game for like, uh, off and on for like three or four months to get my latest PB. So that's about how long it takes. <laughs> uh, so there are, there are some people in chat wondering why this Manning's being beaten to death. So the game doesn't really explain it at the beginning, but basically um, Murphy's son uh, died uh, a long time ago. I don't know. It, it, a lot of children die in the Silent Hill games overall. So I guess, you know, it's kind of a staple of the series at this point. But basically Murphy believes that this guy that we just beaten up uh, called Napier is the one that did that to his son. So he's basically taking revenge over what happened to his son. Yeah, sounds like people want you to continue playing this game. 
It sounds pretty good to me. <laughs> they're just, they're trolling me. <laughs> no, they're not. They're being serious. Uh. We really need to play to continue playing this game. Yeah. I have like a, a JP fan club on my channel. <laughs> <laughs> He's like my favorite character. He's so goofy. So mm -hmm. basically what's happening right now, um, we're getting transferred to a new prison and we don't know yet why we're being transferred to a new prison. Um, but spoilers, it's because there is another character in the game that would like us to be in her prison, the prison that she works for, and we're going to see her coming up very soon. Um, but the guy that is next to us is called Suo. And as we're gonna see later, he is not exactly a cool guy. Let's just put it that way. Um, a thing I should point out too, when you're doing these forced walking sequences at the beginning, holding down the run button does make Murphy walk slightly faster. He still looks like he's walking pretty slow, but yeah, it's like a little bit faster. Let's just say it's so not precise. very, it's not very noticeable no. <laughs> uh, that you're going faster, unfortunately. <laughs> it's an interactive movie. Yes, it is. Wow. I mean, there's plenty of games like that nowadays, right? I love them usually, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Downpour this is, is basically a Telltale game. Not even yeah. <laughs> Be before Telltale games Maybe were a thing. Actually, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm, I mean, Dunkware is probably older than any Telltale game, right? I think it's 2012. I can't remember when the first Telltale game was a thing. Move them out. The famous bus. Everyone is uh, posting JP memes now. What have you unleashed? <laughs> nice. I told you, they love JP. <laughs> I have a sound command of him saying, name's JP. And every time we get to that cutscene, it's just like, that's all you hear in chat. All yours name's JP, name's JP, name's JP. Oh, I only have the the part yeah. later on All when right. Murphy f almost falls the in the monastery, Mama. you know, w with the bad word in it. Uh, <laughs> the bad word, yeah. I know yeah. <laughs> Just people find it funny. Um, yeah. Pendleton. How optimizes this run? Well, let's put it this way. Um, I think that we all tried Get on the bus. to find even the smallest time saves that we could. Um, but truthfully, this game is oddly very solid. Like, the, there's no stuff like out of bounds or anything like that, which is very weird considering how many bugs this game overall has. But none of the bugs is actually useful to make the speed run faster. Oh, this cuts if anything, really loud. they are the opposite. So, I mean, it's it's optimized, I guess. But we wish we could find something more. To go on yeah, to, to I want to. Wanna with it. I, I want to see. There has to be like a way to clip into that cafe or something and skip the truck cutscene. Maybe I don't know though. I always say I'm gonna mess around and try to see if I can find something. <laughs> like, yeah, I but I haven't it, done it yet. It makes it so hard because of how the game is structured and the, the checkpoints and the saves and whatnot. It, it makes me very hard to test out these things. Yeah, that too. And unfortunately, this game, well, I mean, I, I can understand why people wouldn't want to run this game, but at the same time, I wish there were more people. Because each one of us, one way or the other, contributed to making the run slightly faster. Most of the time, yeah. it's one second at a time. So, you know, not, not much, but it's something. It all adds up. <clears throat> Yeah, each person finds one little strat and it adds like just a little bit and then just a little bit more and then just a little bit more. 
No, there's other people on the bus. <laughs> it's not just Murphy on the bus. <laughs> yeah. Would be, it would be funny if it was, though. Um, one of the people that hangs out in my streams actually used to work in the prison system, and he explained that these, like, transfer buses stop from, like, prison to prison, to, so they kind of do, like, a route, like, on certain days out of the week or whatever. So, like, maybe a couple of these other people in the back they might have picked up from, like, another prison, too, or something like that. And the bus driver was not looking at the road at all. <laughs> I don't know what his problem is. Actually, see, this is where the comic book comes into play. Oh, um, here we go. You do meet the, like, the comic... Okay, it's a small backstory. The comic book that came out for this game actually talks about the whole story of Downpour, but from Anne's perspective. The, the policewoman that tried to stop us from getting on the bus at, at the beginning for some reason. She likes to stop us and just, you know, give us that ominous look. Um, and there's gonna be something happening between Anne and Murphy very soon. And after that, she actually meets up with the driver of the bus. And there's a, oh. a little interaction between them where she obviously can see that the driver of the bus is actually dead but she hallucinates him as speaking to her and basically blaming her for the accident. Between yourself and the bus. <laughs> that's crazy. That's, that's a lot smarter than what I was going to say. I was going to say that's because Murphy didn't thank the bus driver. <laughs> he just died of sadness. No. <laughs> Oh, Murphy really likes to balance on beams. That's uh, one of his favorite hobbies. <laughs> it is perfectly fine to love this game, by the way. Like, I want to make it clear. This game has a lot yeah. of problems, but it also has some aspects of it that I, I can see why it would be fascinating for people. It's just... It just has also a lot of problems, and sometimes it's very hard to see past the problems. Um, I'm not gonna lie to you, actually. Um, speed, because uh, yeah, I, I actually never spent my time, but speedrunning this game actually fi fixes some of the issues that the game has casually. Yeah, that's true. Take it easy. And it's and also a very chill speedrun, you know. I, I think that's is. one of the reasons why I liked it in the first place. You can do something and then, you know, get up, make yourself a coffee or whatever, because you're going to be stuck in a cutscene for a while. <laughs> so, not that bad. I was just looking for help. And you just I, happened to so this is the cutscene that I was referring to, and is Save trying to comfort, com com comfort, confront, sorry, uh, Murphy, and try to re-arrest him, I guess. Um, this is stupid. But she's in a very I'll precarious situation. Bus, okay? And this is where you actually get the first choice of the game. The first time in the game where you can make a choice of whether to be good Murphy or bad Murphy. And we always pick the good option because it's actually faster in all of the situations where you get to pick a choice. But it doesn't change anything. The outcome of this cutscene doesn't change regardless of what you pick. And yeah, to be honest... <laughs> Yeah, and to be honest, the outcome of any cutscene doesn't change based on what you pick. It's just, uh, it just changes which ending you get. Damn it. it just has influence yeah. on the ending that you get. <clears throat> and so, for example, in the comic book, basically the comic book starts from this point, where Anne falls down in the canyon, and one would think, oh, well, she's dead, whatever. She's not. She actually survives the fall because Silent Hill... Uh, I guess, and um, but she has to go through what probably it's her personal hell. The way that it's portrayed in the comic book, it looks like she's uh, having to deal with some of the people that died in the accident, like the bus driver or another uh, policeman that was in the accident. And then she crosses a door that very much resembles what a door to hell would look like.
Yeah, the story of the comic book actually sounded pretty interesting when you were talking about it before. It sucks that they didn't include more of that. Well, as far as I know, what happened is that um, to, to give a bit of a backstory on the development of this game, um, it was developed by a Czech studio uh, called Vatra Games that before this made only another game. Uh, game and that game cool. flopped horribly in the first place. And then, I don't know why, I'm guessing for costs reasons, Konami was like, we want a new Silent Hill, let's just give it to these developers from Czech Republic. And I think they had some really good ideas because we know from data mining that there is a playable model of N in the game. And it's easy to assume that they were planning to either make a DLC or either to make this game into a two scenario part. And to begin with, this game would have made way more sense if you were playing from Anne's perspective, not Murphy. Because wow. technically speaking, Murphy didn't do anything that. bad to be here, but Anne did. No, Anne did a lot of stuff mm. for which you would deserve to be in Silent no Hill, but not Murphy really. <clears throat> Wicked old beast, ain't she? What? What? I said I'll she's a it. wicked old beast. Me, I'm uh, partial to at the um, less part earlier, um, one of the things in this game that you can do Look, is um, I don't when you get trouble, to a locked door or one of the boarded up stuff, if you hit it a little bit distance, and each now thing has its own distance where this works at, so you have to figure out where the point is for each individual door, but you can start hitting it from a little bit farther away, and it'll kind of zoom you up to it, so that cuts out, like, a little bit of time, um, and then also when you go to open the door after you, like, like when I hit the, uh, lock off the door, you have to hit that at the right rhythm, otherwise the game will drop your input. So for a lot, a lot of stuff in this game is like that, where you have to hit the buttons at the right timing, otherwise it drops your inputs. Um, and then when you go up the ladder, like I went up the ladder earlier, you have to maneuver Murphy off camera because the camera's not facing him. So uh, me and Queen were talking about it earlier. Sometimes when you're off camera, you actually end up for whatever reason in between those two barrels next to the ladder. Murphy just gets like wedged in there because I don't know, he just, really he's really weird to control, it's hard to explain, but yeah, so you, really in your mind, you're controlling him to go around the man. barrels, but you're off camera, and for whatever reason, he, like, cuts short. Um, I don't know how to explain well, it. <laughs> it's so you could also though. say, for example, that his Xbox, his Xbox, his hitboxes, I cannot his speak Xbox. today. <laughs> <laughs> His hitboxes are very odd. Hey, like, sometimes you can take place? corners I very tightly. Other times you have to be very far away from the corner, otherwise you're going to get stuck in there. Like, I, I don't know why it's like this, but sometimes moving Murphy around is just a chore. It's honestly a chore. That um, cutscene right there, I ended up getting bad RNG with it uh, because where it showed Murphy's face zoomed in, you don't always get that little bit at the end of the cutscene. Like, oh. other times it'll just put you right I'm back into controlling the character. So that adds on, like, a couple of extra seconds if you, like, get, like, I don't know if it's, like, some kind of loading RNG. You get, like, a little extra bit at the end of the cutscene oh, that you don't always get. So that's, like, a little bit of bad luck. Anyone hear me? And uh, if you all notice, for example, um, there was also a part where Jill had her weapon ready. That's because you are actually forced to walk in that part in the little corridor at the entrance of the Devil's Pit oh pit stop, and uh, uh, preparing, readying up the weapon basically makes you go slightly faster. And you know, this is the kind of stuff that I mean by we are just basically going second by second at this point because all of these uh, movements and all of these uh, manipulations only save very little time, unfortunately. Yeah, and if you get stuck on, like, three corners, it's like, there goes your time save anyway. <laughs> An eternal enigma. Gift a sub to Murphy. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> oh. 
Murphy loves to get stuck on corners. That door frame that I came through to get into that room where I rotated the painting at, I've gotten stuck on that corner a bunch of times. You try to do the corners tightly because you're like, oh, tight lines, I'll save time. No, yeah. you want to take that corner pretty wide. <laughs> you basically have to learn by trial and error which corners are safe to get tight and which corners aren't. Um, yeah. Especially in these sections where you're basically being chased by this entity. Um, if you get stuck for too long, you are gonna die. And the worst part about this is that for some reason, this entity sometimes also insta-kills you in some parts of the game for no reason whatsoever, other than I feel like it. I mean, we, be we believe that it's a bug that can happen even if you're full HP, you just get to, like slightly touched and you just die instantly. That's not supposed to happen. Um, my theory is that it has something to do with the fact that you are going too fast, so the game doesn't really comprehend how far ahead you are in the chasing section, and for some reason it causes that to happen. But I don't think anyone found out if that's the real reason or not. It's just... We just kind of cross fingers that it doesn't happen most of the times. <clears throat> Yeah, I call I call it the haha -ha ball, the the red void thing, like the emo. <laughs> what is this place? The haha -ha ball. Uh, a few other people have started calling it that too. It's like it's catching on. You're putting all the downpour trends down. <laughs> yeah, I just want you guys to know what the hip lingo is. It's called the haha -ha ball. Yeah. <laughs> So, since there's not much going on in this part, um, right after, let's talk about the comic a little bit more since I have it in front of me. Yes. So right after you get in, you get through this door to hell, uh, basically Anne is greeted by uh, a figure in a, or, well, not a figure, but like a wheelchair covered in blood. And she finds the tag uh, with written Frank Coleridge on top of it, and Frank Coleridge is actually Anne's dad. So this is a bit of spoilers, I'd say, because you're not really supposed to know this yet in the game. Murphy knows about it, but he doesn't know that Anne is Frank's daughter. And basically, uh, after that, Anne is just reminiscing about a moment that uh, she had with her father. Um, where they were talking about what she would like to be when she grew up. And she tells him that, you know, oh, I want to be a, a prison uh, policeman like you, Daddy. You know, she's, she's all about it. She's all about that life. She wants to be like her dad. If I can do that line a little bit better, I can, like, skip getting hit by that, uh, the haha -ha ball back there. The, that's what I'm talking about. The line that you do for this part, if you, it, if you do it on the Xbox One or if you do it on a continue, you can skip getting hit by that one and this one. But it doesn't work on the Series X quite the same. You can skip getting hit by the second hit, but not the third one. I haven't figured out how to skip the third hit yet. And everything is back to normal. Everything is going okay. You're not losing your mind, Murphy. You're all right. It's fine. Oh my gosh. Sometimes he opens the door slower than other times. I think it's due to like the angle that you grab the door handle at or something. It's possible. Definitely. Uh, we use the Series X because the loading times are much faster. I mean, the run that's, is in real time. Yeah, uh, the the run is only in real time because the in-game timer of the game is not great and it works in weird and mysterious ways. Um, so the run is in real time and actually you can clearly notice the difference between runs made on a 360 and a Series X or an Xbox One. Like you can you can clearly tell that the loading times are very different. 
Um, I never run on a Series X, for example, because I don't have one. Uh, and my loading times would be way longer than Jill's at any fucking, uh, at any moment of the game, basically. Yeah, and on the Series X, it's like since the enemies load into the game faster or something like that, uh, they're like kind of more aggressive or their behaviors are slightly different. Um, like there's a screamer that spawns in like a corner like playground thing. But on the Xbox One, you hardly ever see her, but her timing is a lot tighter on the Series X, for example. And then in the prison, there's like a big uh, shirtless guy chasing you right before the showers, but you like never see him on the Xbox One. But on the Series X, like, I feel like I get punched by him all the time. He's like right behind me. Because he just like loads in faster and starts moving faster. That's what I heard from pretty much anyone that runs on the Series X that, uh, yes, the loading times are faster, but the enemies uh, also probably load in faster and they're way more aggressive, apparently. I don't really know why, um, you know, changing console would also change the AI of the enemies to be more aggressive and the like. Um, but it's kind of like, I guess that's, you could call it a downside of running on the Series X, but even if you got bad luck with the monsters, you would probably, you would most definitely still be faster than running on an Xbox One or anything below that. So. Super hard puzzle coming up. Yeah, I don't know how this water puzzle works, actually. We were talking about it one day, like, how does this, I don't know what it is. <laughs> like, how is he controlling the ball? Uh, There's no scientific explanation to this. I think we shouldn't just, just question that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm back to the sky tram. So I think, we're doing um, this. Dropping yeah. the wrench here helps with the enemies coming up. Sorry, go ahead. No, I just wanted to say that we're just getting that to get the ticket and then to go and get. Um, how do you call it? Like a sky train? Nice. Yeah, the sky tram thing. Okay. Yeah. And so after this little cutscene here, and after many cutscenes in the game, uh, you want to let off of the analog stick for like a second before you start moving again. Otherwise, Murphy starts like running backwards or running in a random direction. That's that's like one of the cutscenes where he's like notorious to do that. I feel like. Shout out to Murphy's second outfit, by the way. <laughs> yeah. That you're forced to pick up because you actually need, like, you don't need the outfit, you need the stuff within the outfit. Um, and I don't think many people know this, but there is actually a third outfit in the game. Well, let's say a fifth, I guess, because of what happens later, but um, a, a fourth, not fifth, uh, because it's tied to a side quest. And I think not a lot of people find it or care about it, you know, the first time around that they play the game. But it's a pretty cool outfit, I like it. Yeah, that's a cool one. Wish we could incorporate it in the speedrun somehow. I mean, uh, the 100% do you, and you probably end up with it there, right? You don't, you're not forced to pick it up, so I'm guessing picking oh, okay. it up would just make the game slower, Wherever like the run slower. Can't be worse than back there, can it? So, Right after this uh, little cutscene with the SkyTrain going up, there's gonna be one of the things that oh. drove me crazy <laughs> no. for so long. <laughs> but and I know this is gonna sound silly, but getting out of this SkyTrain yeah. is one of the hardest thing in the game because the hitbox of of the doors when you need to get out of the sky trains are is so weird you have to perfectly slide it in otherwise you're of, not gonna get out yeah i kind of figured out a way to try to all like it works 80 percent of the time almost every time just don't touch the analog <laughs> stick while this cutscene's going on when it starts to make it where you can see murphy head on i click the stick in and move it down that's when i start moving so like here Start clicking it and moving it down. Almost, it was almost smooth. <laughs> that that was that looked actually quite like a ballerina, you know. Yeah, <laughs> she was he having did a, a little, little twirl. Dance. Yeah. Anybody in here? 
But yeah, that, it's pretty consistent Whoa. to do that. But yeah, that, it's a meme trying to get out of that thing. I feel like you have to like play with it until you find like whatever works. Yeah, it's it's so hard even to like explain how to do it properly because each one of us has their own way of doing it and it, you just kind of feel it, you know. It's a little bit like homecoming clips, I guess. Uh, some of them at least. It's kind of hard to just explain them. You have to just try and find the best uh, way go, that suits you. Kirak. So we're about to meet uh, Jill's favorite character. JP. <laughs> you should speak about JP. <laughs> well, does it say anything about him in the comics, actually? <laughs> um, actually, if I remember, yes. Let me check. All right, quick. let's go. That JP lore. All right, there's another little part that I'm going to leave, you know, for some people if maybe they want to they wanna get the, the comic book at some Pretty point, since it's, you can still find it and buy it. Uh, but basically, well, JP saves but Anne from an almost certain and death. And, and, and then there's a very cool, yeah, a actually nice a very place. cool drawing where yeah. Anne goes on the train with JP and they have a little conversation and then she Beans notices JP, a journal article where she sees what happened with JP the uh, so with the train accident and so on and so the train fills up with little ghost of kids basically it's a it's a very cool imagery like it, it doesn't really work if I just explain it but it's very cool and you know she starts basically bashing First JP for what he has done. <laughs> oh, wow. And just goes on quite the adventure. <laughs> Honestly, oh, she does. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah. It, it, the, there's a lot that happens to Anne, and I think it would have been great if we could have played as Anne from the beginning, or if we at least got a DLC or something, because the comic book is cool, and it's well written and uh, well drawn but it's still very limited you know i tell you all the kids they just love that little train i should say after um a lot of cutscenes, murphy will be facing like random directions um so for this one like you can so you kind of try to push your analog sticks the direction you think to go the direction you need to go, but sometimes you'll still be like going the wrong direction. So like here, like you want to go obviously this way, but sometimes you'll be like going the complete opposite way. Sounds like a fun place to bring. I don't know. Some of them you can like manipulate which direction he's going to be going after the cutscene, but others it's like I don't know how to do that. Like for that specific cutscene, I'm not sure how to manipulate his direction. So you just kind of like hope he's going the right way after the cutscene ends. So in case you haven't uh, noticed, uh, it also looks like sometimes Murphy is running way faster. That's because he is. And basically whenever you are in the range of an enemy, uh, you actually get a speed boost. So sometimes it makes sense to risk and getting close to an enemy to get that speed boost, but depending on the type of enemy, that could actually lose you time if they hit you or if they stun you. So. For, for these parts here where you're climbing, I find that tapping the right trigger works better than holding it. If you actually hold the right trigger like the game instructs you to do, I feel like a lot of time he'll drop that hand. But tapping it for the right side works more consistently for me. And you also need to be careful not to press the button too soon because if you do and you hold it, the game actually thinks that you are not pressing the button at all. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And it, it happened to me to fall from that because, you know, um, let's just say inputs in this, like QTEs and inputs in this game are a bit weird. Yeah, and some of the parts where you have to like mash buttons or whatever, you have to feel it out to find out which ones you actually need to push the button fast or slow. Because <laughs> some of them, when you push the button too fast, it just drops your inputs. 
Uh, like we were talking about the train part where I, I've died on that before from like moving the analog stick too fast. Yep. Uh, That's a classic. The classic. Everyone has done it. At some point, <laughs> everyone has done it. Uh. And there was also, um, a, a, let's say, a small issue that can occur at the bridge that we just passed. Um, if you noticed, uh, Jill actually threw her hatchet on the other side of the bridge. That's because uh, keeping this hatchet saves us time afterwards. But it's also possible that you, well, not you specifically, but Murphy, because Murphy has his own will and, you know, his own mind in this game. You don't really control him. You control him when he lets you control him. Um, he can shoot it either down the waterfall or it can happen that you shoot it too far and it gets stuck in one of the rocks and you oh, cannot yeah. pick it up anymore. The classic. Some, the class. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it just literally disappears. That's also a possibility. So like, it's very... This was one of the scariest parts for me because I would get there and I'm like, I'm 30 minutes into the run. Yeah, if, if I threw this badly, I have to reset and watch another 20 <laughs> minutes of cutscenes. And that happened a few times. More than I like to admit. Yeah, yeah, you have to throw it to the other side because otherwise once he's hanging off the bridge, you drop it. So throwing it makes it where you can keep holding on to it. Because it's like faster and shorter range than the pickaxe. So it's just like more, it's preferable to have. This game really likes to force you to lose all of your items. Um, that That's basically what happens there. Whenever there's a section where Murphy is about to fall, it's basically the game being like, you're losing all of your items now. It doesn't matter. That's why we have to actually throw it and not just, you know, just walk up to the bridge and do the sequence. Or Spider-Man, here it is. This guy sometimes can be annoying. Most of the times he's not gonna come to you and okay. try to hit you. Yeah, that was close. <laughs> <laughs> that was very close. Right when you said it. <laughs> I should have not said anything. You I, I'm just gonna him. wait. <laughs> I'm just gonna wait for you to do things. Oh and my god, don't say about anything it. about the one at the, uh, the dynamite <laughs> part. <laughs> sometimes that guy trolls me so bad. See, that, that's one of the difference, for example. On the, on the Xbox One, I, I've maybe, maybe it happened to me once, then these guys tried to attack me while I was uh, breaking down the, the wood. But from my understanding, in the, on the Series X, this happens a bit more often, right? Like, they are more aggressive. Yeah. And... yeah, sometimes that particular guy will hit me as I'm climbing the ladder. Like, I'm climbing the ladder and he's still hitting me. I'm like, what? Yeah. So, um, to give an explanation about JP, because we didn't really talk about it much, but basically what happened is that it was uh, the driver of the train that goes around the Devil's Pit, uh, like a tourist attraction, and there was a big accident where I think eight kids died because he was driving while drunk, and he crashed the train while doing so. So that's why there's that part with Anne that I uh, spoke about earlier. Um, and actually what happens after she tries to confront Seder about it and be like, what the hell, dude? Like, you know, what, what kind of thing were you thinking when you did that, right? Um, she basically gets covered by all of these ghosts of kids and she gets like drowned in them. And she has, um, she remembers uh, something about her past when basically her husband came to give her the news that um, her dad was basically ended up in a wheelchair and not being able to take care of himself because of something that happened at the prison that we're going to see later. And I sure as hell never heard. But it's a little, it's a little insight basically on what's going on with him and and what's going on through her mind can you imagine what that's like murphy living all your life inside someone else's life can you 
listen to us talk. As if anybody out there gives a damn. When we're the ones who decide if we can live with what we've done. Wait. So we're gonna console him. Just wait a second. <laughs> Very consoling I here. You yeah. Murphy. It, it doesn't really help <laughs> either way, but I actually, one time I tried to give the bad option because I was getting all the achievements, so I've, I, you have to get all the endings for the achievements. And um, yeah, I was curious because I was like, is it possible that the bad options is really like that longer? And it is. Like he starts just bashing poor JP, you know, and telling him how, how awful of a person he is. And I'm like, God, I'm never going to pick this ever again. Oh my god. Damn, Murphy. Roasting the poor guy. Murphy is not a. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Murphy is not a saint by any means, but he believes that he's better than JP, obviously. Yeah, like he has like a superiority complex. This raspberry jam monster is like a troll sometimes. What? Yep. Okay, go away. Get out of here. Please don't fall on me. Uh, this time I didn't say anything. <laughs> at least he. At least he knocked me into the room. <laughs> I was not responsible for this one. Oh, it's fun. He gave me a little speed boost though. That was nice. He felt bad, I guess. <laughs> That's uh, one of the advantages, I guess, of uh, being so close to monsters. Fuck! Yeah. Excuse me, sir. Hey. There's a lot of elevators in the mines. Yeah. This, um, screamer coming up, I... So it's like another part where it's like you could get really good RNG and it goes really smooth, or you could get trolled. Um, I've been just trying to run faster. Sometimes it doesn't work out so good, so we'll see. This isn't a PB attempt, so it doesn't really matter. I feel like if I try to stand on the right side of the elevator, it kind of baits her to go in this direction, I feel like. But sometimes you got to be careful you don't get caught on like the lip of like the corner of the the elevator. Oh, okay. Oh, she's doing oh. that, I guess. This is probably I just the went worst. For yeah, th that is probably the worst attack that you can have to deal with because it stuns you forever. And there's quite a few parts in the run where you can get hit by one of these attacks. It's just, it's very hard to figure out under which circumstances they do it, because sometimes they do it when you're yeah. really far away, and other times they do it when you are close to them. So it, you cannot even be like, let's just run like on top of her, basically, so that she does the swipe instead of screaming at you. That yeah. just doesn't work. They, they do whatever they want. I thought she was going to start running up the stairs. That's why I like, stood there for yeah. a second, because she was... She was pretty far down at the bottom of the stairs, so I wanted her to start coming up a little bit further, because if she's within range of that puzzle, you can't uh, interact with the puzzle. So I was trying to kind of bait her up a little bit higher, and I was going to run past her, but then she did the scream that I, di I didn't think she was going to do that, so... I probably would have reset there. This <laughs> was an actual... I probably would have reset there. That was pretty bad. But, like, Jill is I... uh, riskier than me, because I would have just bashed her, you know, I would have been like, just stay down. Don't bother me. I'm doing a puzzle <laughs> over here, like. Yeah. I have found that I think it works 80% of the time, every time, the one in the Centennial building. I think if you kind of run back for a second and then run forward, she, it puts you out of her range, so she'll kind of run forward before she starts screaming. And I think you can do that and then run past her. Sometimes she still screams, but I feel like it, it seems like it helps. So it's like... That, like you're saying, the enemies, like, the range on them sometimes is, like, it's a little confusing. I don't know. It seems like each one is, like, a little different or whatever. And sometimes they just do whatever they want. I'd like to point out that so far, every time that you've been talking about a strat, it's been, like, 
oh, you know, 80% of the times this 80% works. 80% of the like, time, every time. <laughs> 60% of the times this works. There's nothing 100% in this game. Like, oh, no. deal with it. <laughs> This is the part that we were talking about earlier. If you move the analog stick too fast, it like drops your inputs. So you can't try to break free too fast. Yeah, don't be too good at the game. That's what yeah. we're trying to say. Or you'll die. It's like a, it's a one hit kill there. Murphy is pretty unfazed through this whole situation but like he doesn't he doesn't even flinch he's just like chilling in the train yeah he's literally just like <laughs> like i honestly think that they gave him no animation it, it, it's yeah. just like a, a stable model and just you yeah know, i mean he screams and whatever but... yeah i i have the same shirt that he's wearing and i've tried to do it before on stream where like i'll go back to back and try to like move around with him on the so it looks like i'm on the train <laughs> part but it's stupid. I mean, that's why it's funny, you know? Yeah. This is, like, a really good bathroom break time. Like, uh, a lot of time I'll, like, get up during that time. Because after you do that quick time event, there's that little portion of cutscene. And then there's another cutscene. So this is, like, one of the, like, longer kind of breaks in the game, I feel like. There's this little bit here. And... In Anne's timeline, because here is where we find Anne again, this is exactly after she met JP. So it's like, it, it feels like she's spending a lot of time in her own personal things. Like in the comic, it does, not much happens in, in this entire uh, time lapse, time, time, time spawn. But I cannot speak anymore today. Bear with me, chat. I'm sorry. It's like this. six in the morning for we me. We should help each other. Oh, good. This place, I... I'm, I'm trying to pull through. Um, but yeah, basically this here. scene is also depicted in the comic book, but it's slightly different. So this is one of the reasons why it's so hard to understand Where what's going on this? in Downpour sometimes. Where in the hell did you but you can see that Anne is pretty upset at Murphy. Um, we don't really know why yet in the game. No. Uh, but basically, she looks like she's gonna shoot him. She looks pretty determined to get rid of Murphy. That's what she wants to do, after all. But she has a breakdown. You, you cannot really tell within the game what happens with her, and she's like, "Whatever, just leave me alone." <laughs> and 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 that it looks so weird from a cutscene perspective because there's no explanation for her just doing that do think I've done? yeah um but in the comic book you actually get um a flashback of n uh with her father at the shooting range uh where her father is basically teaching her how to shoot and you know because that's what she she wants to be a police uh, a policewoman so she's practicing for that and um she really thinks that this is gonna help her do her job better, shooting things. But her dad is like, I'm gonna quote directly from the comic. I mean, shooting has to be the last resort, always. You've gotta use any other methods you have available to defuse dangerous situations first. You have to keep oh. everyone alive, kiddo. Everyone. So oh. basically, she's remembering this moment with her dad and she feels like she cannot do it because what the hell are you waiting for? He's having this memory. Yeah, that adds like a lot more context to the cutscene. It does. Because otherwise, like you said, it just like her sudden change of heart is just like, what? I'm sorry. <laughs> and the fact that she says, I'm sorry makes me think of like that she was thinking of a cutscene she's like apologizing to her dad for like being about to shoot somebody um that's the idea but actually that lines bridges towards the next part of the comic where she's remembering another part where she's apologizing to her husband and her oh. husband is having a pretty bad reaction to it because basically after her dad ended up on a wheelchair um she's basically she how, how do I put this? She's focusing entirely on her dad 
and what happened to him, which is understandable. But by doing so, she's neglecting everyone and everything else, including her husband. She's not at home anymore. She doesn't speak to him. They don't spend any time together. Every hour of her day that it's not spent working, it's spent with her dad. And every, you know, uh, everything that she has is basically used for her dad at this point. And her husband has reached a breaking point, basically. Nice. I picked up the nail gun first. Every once in a while I get that. So it's like, nice. Picked up the nail gun first. Where is Which everybody? makes it more comfortable. Well, it's because, well, if you pick up the axe first and then the nail gun, he has to drop the axe, pick up the nail gun, and then pick yep. the axe back up. But if you pick up the nail gun first, it's like, saves like a second or something. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, basically we need this uh, two-handed axe for later on in the game. There's like a, uh, there's a boarded up door that is programmed to break every axe in the game. But I think be since this is like a DLC item, it doesn't have the same programming. So you can break down that door with this axe without having to like go off to the side to get like a different axe. So we're going to hold on to this axe for like a while. can hear little feet behind me. If you get um, detected by the cop car, that siren that went off, sometimes there's like an extra screamer that'll get you and that um, after you go out of that little corner area, which is like a bit of a pain. And then I got Pretty the dead. force walking second yeah. there. On the Xbox One, you always get the force walking there, but on the Series X, sometimes you don't. Go ahead, sorry. Oh, we have JP Sater in chat. Do you want to tell him anything? Oh my God. I'm your biggest <laughs> fan, JP. <laughs> oh my God, can I have your autograph? Uh, I just, just love you know, that little train. <laughs> oh my gosh. Contact Jill via DM later for the autograph. Thank you. <laughs> Please and thank. <laughs> it's JP Sater. Oh my god. Is that someone know, from my stream making an alt account? Probably. I don't know if you can read chat. Uh, but he says, open. Boy, I tell ya, all the kids, they just love that little train. Almost as much as old JP here, Limes is Jack Daniels. <laughs> Oh man, that uh, so that window that was up there, um, it's a little tricky. That's another one of those times where you have to let off of the analog stick completely after you interact with like something, because otherwise, he has a tendency to want to get sucked back into the window. If you like, if you're holding down forward the whole time, you're holding down forward to go through the window. But if you continue to hold down forward after you go through the window, he'll get sucked in backwards. So you have to like let up and then like start moving forward again after a second. Jeez. You scared the hell out of me. <laughs> Definitely not what I intended. Still in town, I see. Sometimes I mess that up. I still get sucked into the You're window sometimes. The and then that's a reset, because he takes like 30 yeah, seconds to freaking climb in and out of the exactly. window yeah. back and forth. He's I so mean, slow. You know, Murphy, uh, like, he has no reason to take it fast, you know. He's just, yeah, he's just, he's having, just on a stroll. He's just having such a bad day already. Why should he rush through a window, you know? Can't say. I understand. Yeah. Just cutting himself or something. This is a busy town. Do you think yeah. these letters deliver themselves? Whatever. Can you at least tell me where the radio station is? Um, so after this cutscene down this alleyway, there's, like I was saying earlier, the enemy that spawns over here. Most times you don't see her For on sure. the Series X, but on the Xbox One, or no, backwards. Most times you don't see her on the Xbox One, but on the Series X, she spawns in a lot quicker. Um, Schmumbler had said if you turn down the corner like really fast, it prevents her from spawning, but I have 
found that that doesn't seem to be like a hundred percent like like that's so another one of those eighty percent of the time every time no things idea. like you can try to turn down the alleyway as quick as you can to prevent her from spawning in but it's another eighty percent of the time thing it it works always on xbox one yeah on xbox Luckily. one yeah if yeah. you're fast enough if you're just even one second slower then she's gonna be there but <clears throat> And you have to manipulate Murphy off camera to make the turn. So it's a little bit of a pain, see? <laughs> that was bad. Uh, <laughs> what's the Anyone difference between me? playing Hello? this game on Xbox One vs Xbox Series X? <laughs> um, the loading times, mostly. <laughs> there, Look, there's a I, lot of... Yeah, tell me. I didn't even make it down the alleyway. I turned into a wall and I go down into the corner and she didn't spawn. That's what I'm saying. It's, it's just like, sometimes <laughs> it just seems random. I don't, I don't know. But go ahead, sorry. No, it's fine. I was just checking out chat. So, Theories X simply has better loading times, like way better. Um, I'm pretty sure that even if any of us tried our best to um, get a better time than a Series X on Xbox One, we wouldn't be able to do it. Because the loading times play such a big part in this game. Um, yeah, that it's for just example. Not possible. The in-game time on my last run, since I messed up that bell puzzle, and your actual in-game time on your run was faster than mine, but then the real time on my run put my spot higher than yours. That's why I was, like, saying, like, my old run, like, wasn't that... That's why I PB'd on top of it, because, like, I made that huge mistake. So yeah, just to give you an example of how much faster the load times are on the Series X, like, your in-game time was faster than mine, but then the it's real time was faster papers. due to the loading times. Yeah, I'm this. pretty sure that if I had the what chance to play on a, on a Series X, me? I could be get a better time very easily because it, yes. it's honestly just out of loading times. Yeah. Even if my run wasn't perfect, it hey, would still Murphy. get a better yeah. uh, I got your PB. Here. Take a look. Yeah, and your lines are so good. You would be like, it would, yeah, you'd be hey, Murphy, very remember, competitive with the Series this X times. So. time offer, my friend. Oh, we got, we got a book of memory connoisseur in the chat. Somebody's Ooh. asking that Mailman shows up in What's the up, Vita game, too. Course. Yes, it does. He does, yeah. What was that about? Uh, Why? We cannot tell you, okay. but he does. Bullshit, bullshitter. <laughs> bad no news, real explanation for that happening. Anyone favors. What are you in for with him? It's nothing. It's um, talking about the about SSD, I, my old sake. run was yeah, on... So the Series 1S using an external SSD and the load times. It wasn't an internal SSD, mind you, but the load times were still slower than the Series X. But putting it on an external SSD on an Xbox One is still faster than using the hard drive that comes in it. And that, that it's a 1S is what I have. What the hell are you doing? Mm, no, at this is that time how you we play don't... it? You're, you're With the like external SSD? No, actually no. Oh, okay. I just have a good old Resistance console <laughs> that doesn't even work anymore. <laughs> oh no! Uh, no, I have to reset it to to factory well, settings or something because no it just doesn't load. It gets stuck on the Windows logo uh, or the Xbox oh, setting, whatever it is. I don't know why, it just stopped working one day of, of, out of nowhere. I guess the console was tired of downpour, which is understandable. The console was tired of downpour. Yeah, well, yeah. You just steer it was like, no more, please. No, <laughs> let me rest. Yes. Even because the run Do is so chance. long, my Xbox was always like, you know, fuming after after a run. It was so hot all the time. Yeah. Yeah, that's something that I have wondered as well with the um, loading times too, is the console temperature. Because the Series X does heat up after a while. And um, I was talking to some people in my stream, and I guess the way that the Series X hardware works is that um, it starts to load things a little bit slower to cool itself down. So I feel like once the console starts to get hot, it's like probably better to turn it off and let it rest and cool back down to do more downpour runs. I don't know. I mean, like we were talking about it even earlier, we we know that there are some loading screens that just get slower if you don't yeah. just reset everything before getting into another run. And uh, I found that out by pure chance because I had my splits set up weirdly. But basically, 
if you take even just two runs of the game in a row, some loading screens are gonna be slower and they're gonna get progressively slower the more runs you take or the more times you use Yeah, it. the game seems to have some kind of like memory leak issues or something on top of the fact, like I was saying about the console temperature possibly also affecting loading times. I feel like we're giving a lot of reasons to not run this game tonight. There are a few reasons. <laughs> Quite a few. <laughs> Just a couple. It's only it's only for the <laughs> the ones who push through all of it, I guess. I don't know. But you know, it's like, good things. It's good points. Yeah. Like I, I can tell, for example, that as weird as it may sound, cutscenes are both a good thing and a bad thing because. Yes. Sure, they are annoying and they cannot be skipped, but at the same time, it means that you can get up and stretch and do whatever. The run is very long, but it doesn't feel that long because you have a lot of time to take breaks in between. Um, and the run is actually quite easy to get into. So I think anyone, literally anyone, could run Shmumbly. down for it. After without. you. After you leave out of that control room that I was just in with the computer, it gives you like a random camera angle every time. So sometimes getting out of that room is like easier or harder depending on what camera angle the game gives you. <laughs> it, it gives you weird camera angles almost at any like door that you come out of. And yeah, stuff the game like that. goes in 2D controls. So it's like whatever camera angle you have dictates what direction you're going. So it's like, yeah, that's what messes it up. Here's this meme. Oh boy. Oh <laughs> no! You got hit with it. Damn. <laughs> so uh, this this fine. little cutscene, I guess you could call it, can actually be skipped. I don't know who found that out. Uh, I'm not sure who discovered it, but if you take that uh, library staircase tight enough, you can avoid getting stunned by the other library shelf falling down and having that little cutscene when Murphy is having a moment where he's considering his life decisions. So <laughs> it actually saves a lot of time because like you are stunned for like four or five seconds. That's like in this game, that's a lot of time. Yeah. Considering how optimized the runs is. He was doing the not like this uh, emoticon. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, this game runs awful on PS3. Oh yeah, we were talking about that before too, because also on the PS3, something that's interesting is the invisible enemies that are coming up are actually invisible on the PS3. And you need to try to get slapped by one of them if possible. So if you can't see them, then it's like, I feel like that would make that even harder. I didn't even know that, see, because I, I did play, yeah. like, originally, sort of when I saw this game right? the very first time, it was when it came yeah, out like on me. PS3, they but it's no been so many years ago that it's like, me, right? I, I've never played this now, game on PS3 course, ever again after that. Why would I, you know? <laughs> it's, yeah. the, the PS3 General version is really not ideal. Um, it runs quite badly, and the loading times are even safety. worse. Yeah, I was watching someone else play it on the PS3, and I didn't know that until I saw them do it. I can't remember. It might. It was. It was one of a couple streamers, so I'm not sure who it was. But yeah, I, uh, the enemies are just completely transparent on the PS3 version. Uh, but yeah, that bookshelf turn. Yeah, I, I, I was. I almost had it, but it's fine. This isn't a PB attempt. Nobody, nobody minds. Plus, now you got you got to see what happens if you do it wrong. <laughs> yeah, Jill is just showing off of all of the possible yeah. situations that can occur. Murphy. You be a straight yeah. shooter with me. I'll be a straight shooter with you. You know how are how, how are you all gonna learn how to play and speed run downpour if you don't get to see also the mistakes that you could do, you know, or the bad yeah. things that, that could happen. So. <laughs> Sometimes it just doesn't load and you'll fall through the world. <laughs> Shout out to Schmumbler, by the way. Current yeah. world record holder for this game. Get all Schmumbly. T 
keypads in this game are a nightmare. I don't even know why I'm saying it. I'm pretty sure Chad already knew before I said it, but like, <laughs> like they already figured that or even keypads would be a problem. But um, if you press too fast, again, you're gonna lose inputs. You're gonna drop inputs and you're gonna miss clicking the right number. I, I did I did happen to lose a lot of time to that I keypad a couple of times level. because I was too fast. Hold me. Also bad RNG on the screaming lady, I yeah. see. Yeah, that was the thing I was talking about 80% of the time, every time. I feel like if you run to the end and then run toward her, she doesn't scream. But it only works like 80% of the time, every time. We that got was the 20%. The 20%, yeah. One time I got a speed boost off of her that lasted all the way until this uh, balance beam here. Yeah. It's only happened to me like once. I think that, that happened insane. actually during the race you had with Schmumbler. I think I remember that, but I may oh. be wrong. I can't remember. Maybe it happened twice then. <laughs> but yeah, it's pretty rare. That's a pretty rare speed boost. It happens more often that maybe she speed boosts you all the way through the boxes, you know, when you climb up initially, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's more common, yeah. And now we're gonna try to get hit by one of these. Yep, there we go. So let me get a speed boost off of that. So these invisible enemies, like I said, they're like completely invisible on PS3. And the reason why she has to get hit, it's actually because Murphy pretends that he doesn't see them, I guess. And he doesn't get a speed boost until you officially aggro them. I guess you could say it that way. So you actually have to get hit by them to get a speed boost off of them, which is not the case for any other enemy in the game. But yeah, it speed boosts you all the way to the elevator. So... Yeah, sometimes you don't get it though. And that's... feels bad, man, when that happens. <laughs> There's a lot of feels bad man moments in this game. <laughs> so this is a very long cutscene, for example. Um, you, of DJ you know, this oh, is I a good moment character. where to make popcorn and stuff. So down the and he's a, he's a good, good character, but... And he has a little bit of a bigger part in the comic, but not by much, unfortunately. He's not very expanded upon. You don't even know why he is there, basically. You don't find that out ever. So... If we want to, you know, mention a little bit more the comic and what happens to Anne since the cutscene is so long... Um, basically, straight after what happens with Murphy, like I said, she was reminiscing about her husband, like the situation with her husband and so on. Uh, and then she has another spooky encounter that I'm not gonna spoil, you guys can go and see that by yourself. Um, but basically then she has another flashback where she was talking uh, to, I think, uh, the warden of, um, of the prison. Uh, where uh, uh, Murphy was held on, and she's trying to convince, uh, Yo, she's trying to convince him to hire her at the prison Murphy is staying in because she wants to be near Murphy and get revenge out for her father. But the warden is like, I can't, we have a hire freeze, I cannot do that, but you know, maybe I could arrange moving Murphy to the prison you work for already. And you're just gonna have to give me something in return. And he makes it pretty obvious that he wants her in return. I'm not gonna go into details, but he makes it pretty obvious. And um, she refuses at first. Um, then there's another part where she basically meets a nightmare version of the warden uh, in Silent Hill while she's going through her own personal hell. Uh, and then she actually meets Howard after that, the mailman. Uh, he rescues her from the situation that she's having. And he's the one telling her, hey, why don't you go um, to, the, to the radio tower, you know? And that's how she ends up being here now in this cutscene. Coming right up. 
this place it, it does strange shit to reality man oh it's and like, something else there's rules you gotta, that i think it's worth cold. mentioning you know what i mean and another Probably indication right. that might lead us to believe uh -huh. that the game was intended to be played on yeah, Anne's so. side to begin with. The out? mannequins I, uh, where Jill got the speed boost nice from with the invisible enemies, yeah. those are Real nice. like the, the origin you. of that enemy is explained only in the Anne comic They're book. Coming. She is the oh, one oh, that yeah. gets attacked Smash. first by one of these mannequins that is dressed uh, as a bride uh, with the heavy makeup and the big wig and stuff like that and she's basically reminiscing of the time where she got married and how happy she was and how her dad brought her to the altar and stuff like that so technically those mannequins have actually nothing to do with murphy um they are an enemy tied what the hell's going to, on to around end, here? so to speak. No! God! If you could skip all cutscenes, how long would this game be roughly? I'd say an hour and twenty? An hour and fifth an hour and a half? Yeah, it would be a lot shorter, yeah, something like that probably. I'm not sure exactly what the um, in-game timer is timing, but the in-game timer for my run is around an hour and a half. Um, if you're interested in the comic book, um, I mean, I uh, I got it as a gift, but back then it was 20 euro for the paperback version, but you can also get the digital version. And that's cheaper, in case you don't want to have the comic, you know, laying around or anything like that, or you want to save some money. Um, the only thing that I would warn you about is that actually, for some reason, the the gluing of the pages to the spine of the comic is very thin. Like, I legit opened this comic once to read it, and twice for my downpour lore run, and all the pages are getting off. And I'm not like you know, like throwing it around or anything like that. I'm trying to be gentle with it, but wow. it, it's destroying itself. Just like the game sometimes. Just like your Xbox. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> See, it's, it's a curse. I'm being cursed. <laughs> Murphy's like, you always just make me go fast. I oh just want to chill. Hello? <laughs> I was mashing it that whole time. Biggest okay. enemy in the game, the Valve. <laughs> this game is very unfinished. Um, unfortunately. I think, I think it was both for lack of resources, lack of experience, and lack of time. Because I would imagine that um, Konami wanted to have a game done as fast as possible. Also, those have, cars falling down can kill you. I've started if you knocking this over, by the way. Oh, <laughs> I just yeah, don't. This is... So I don't even have to mess with this insta kill thing anymore. I just I don't even care anymore. I just knock that thing over because <laughs> this is this... one of those parts in the game where, like, uh, Queen was talking about, where it can just kill you when it barely touches you, yeah. and it's really annoying having your run end there. And, and the run does end there because the checkpoint for this is all the way uh, before you start the chase section, the, the chase sequence. So yeah. you have to go pick up uh, the, 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 the the fuel and the stuff. The fuel, and the, yeah. The lighter, yeah. You have to start the fire all over again. <laughs> so it's, it puts you way back. So yeah. I got tired of messing with that, so I, uh, I just started knocking that cage over. <laughs> um, I know, I know that uh, uh, when I was doing it, I was trying with Enigma Strat, which was the bonk strat, which was basically bonking on the column at the end of it to yeah. kind of like slow down a little. But the problem with that is that half of the times I was getting stuck in the column. Yep, and that's what's <laughs> happening to me, yeah. <laughs> so I'm not the only one. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I feel better about it. <laughs> yeah, so I started trying to like graze the corner instead of like bonk into it and then sometimes that was like that was really inconsistent so now i'm just like you know what i'm not even messing with it i'm knocking the cage over wait no way 
But yeah, so if I don't have the stream pulled up, but yeah, it's about like, what is that, like an hour and 15 into the run if you're on a very good pace. And then uh, you gotta start over again. <laughs> Back right, to the right showers. Right now you are at 1, 14 and 30. No, wait, a yeah. little bit. Yeah, a little bit after that, because I am I was watching the timer on the, you know, action stream. So you're a little bit yeah. after. There are a bunch of RNG parts like in this nice. little section right here that can help or hurt the run. Uh, coming up in a bit here. The first one um, is it's going to be these uh, sporty boys because they squirt different uh, amounts and sometimes you can go through the whole thing without getting hit once, and sometimes you get hit four times, which is really unfortunate. So, we'll see what happens. That was the first one. He only did one. Oh, I got hit. Okay, cool. That was unlucky. Yeah. Oh, nice. I only got hit once. Please don't hit me. Sometimes the one on the end hits me too. Okay, so that was good. And then I always heal after that because I want to be like full speed going past these uh, screamers because these screamers is the next um, RNG point. Oh, nice. I feel like hitting her on that side works 80% of the time every time. No this way that she... This is 20%. Oh my... We're getting all the 20% tonight. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Oh, and then this screamer here can not despawn. Sometimes she'll chase you into the next room. Other times she just despawns. Usually she despawns. We're but sometimes she'll, the she'll chase again, you. Or? No, please. <laughs> she's... No, she's not chasing me. It's fine. I'm not gonna jinx. Okay, this is the second worst enemy in the game. I usually try to get it on the second button push. Yep, yeah, that was pretty good. Nice. So... Um, you have to stop the clock to get on top of it and you have to push the button for it, but you also have to keep track of two things. First of all, the button push is not immediate. Like, Murphy yep. takes like a second or so to actually push the button. And the blade, like the, the arm of the clock, doesn't stop immediately either. So and it you spins have to at like. varying speeds. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you have to just kind of hope that you hit it at the right time. Uh, I guess, you know, we got it down pretty consistent, but it's totally normal that you would not make it on the first try. Oh my god! It's honestly very common. Yeah, I usually get it on the second button push because I just go in and hit the button right away because I, I know how to time the speed of the second button push. But um, sometimes, every once in a while you get the lucky RNG where you hit, you hit the button right away and it like stops right there and you're like, oh, okay, cool. And this is another RNG point, I feel like. Um, Oh, Please. damn. It was definitely through the floor, I felt like. Sometimes you can just run through these and not get hit at all. <laughs> Why? Why? Uh, that was my last uh, first aid kit, so... Okay, let's take it slowly here. I'm gonna be really cautious here. with these. I'm gonna yeah, go these, very slow. These ones are horrible. If those ones hit you, it's a one-hit kill. <laughs> just go cautiously. Since I got hit and had to use my last first aid kit, I'm gonna pick up an extra first aid kit in the uh, the next area that we go to. That's fine. But yeah, sometimes you can just run through those blades in like one single motion and they all line up right where you don't get hit at all. And other times they're kind of a meme. You know, the, the famous one cycle. <laughs> Yeah. Which almost never happens, but one can always... The go. shiny one cycle. I have died here too before, from those uh, blades. <laughs> the water slide, I've died there before too. Uh, this is actually um, the next part where you would see Anne at this point. I don't know why she doesn't appear in this. I'm guessing this is happening either after or before. But Anne ends up in this same exact spot near the clock in a cage together with uh, Bobby Ricks. 
like together with a DJ and they're just in a cage and talking about it and talking about stuff and they get assaulted by a group of monsters while in the cage and she's fighting for her life obviously but it's kind of sad because Bobby Ricks is just kind of given up and he just lets the monster take him basically and kill him all of a sudden clock tower yeah and then um, this loading screen right here is the one we were talking about. This loading screen right here is notorious for just loading at, like, different times. Uh, one time I was doing a run, I lost five seconds on this loading screen. <laughs> so that's fun. You know, you could get your death loading off. RNG. If you're not careful. Got something for you. It's really hard to hold on to time save in this game. The game does everything it can to just take it away. The game giveth and the game taketh away. This can't be right. Got your name on it, doesn't it? Seems plenty right to me. It's just, uh, you know, depending on what kind of karma points you have with Murphy, you know. If you've been good enough to Murphy or not. No. Murphy gonna Murph. Finish with the riddles, the mind games. Whatever I did to get here, oh, and if, if any of you out. has ever considered you getting me, all you? the achievements in this game, just don't, honestly. Just don't, so, don't bother. Do uh, I have all the here. achievements, don't you? I know, I, I, I yeah, I do, but, you, you know, oh. it was not a pleasant <laughs> experience on the life. I'm <laughs> just, just trying to rescue all people the, from it. All the cool people have all the achievements in this game, I'm just letting you know. <laughs> It's just that the way some of the achievements work is very odd. Like, for example, there's an achievement that requires you to use a certain amount of medikits, I think, in one run. Mm. But even though you can, like, even though you use them and you consume them, you actually have to have lost HP for them to count towards the achievement. And I found that out at the very end of the game before going in the final prison part. And mm. I was like, are you kidding me? And so I just oh, started no. getting getting hit by monsters on purpose just to get that achievement because I didn't want to do another full run just for that. Yeah, because like you said earlier, you can't make save points in this game. So you get a few checkpoints where you can go back a little bit, but then otherwise it's just like, that's it. You got to start over if you want to play the game through again. I'd like to point out that the only reason why I got all the achievements is because I jokingly put a sub goal for it and it was Enigma's community, an eternal mm. Enigma's community's fault for getting me to that point. So I'm gonna blame it on that. <laughs> so you got all the achievements because of a sub goal. I started running the game because of a community channel point goal. <laughs> uh. Yeah, it's just, you know. People love this game. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody wants to see more downfall. Pendleton. Yeah. I receive this as long as they are not the ones playing it, of course. <laughs> you know, as long as it's someone else. Ah, oh, yeah. There's a few games Mr. that I feel like that about where I like watching other people play it, but you were the only I do oh, yeah. enjoy playing them. Your yeah, definitely. So I get it. Family. No, uh, that can't be. Uh, I mean, but to be fair, um, this game casually, it's it's it is frustrating, but it also means that you most likely will get to see side quests. I mean, you get to see side quests even in the 100% speedrun, um, but you know they're done quickly, as quickly as possible. You don't really. Um, you know, stay there and examine things or think things through or read story what and the so hell? some of the side quests in this game are arguably better than the game itself. <laughs> but you know um, they're usually very short and very simple and some of them are almost feel like a scam more than side quests, but they're there, they're an option. What happened here? What, yeah, you can actually like party? explore the town and find a bunch of little side quests with like uh, kind of like it adds wind. flavor to the when game. The annoying thing about exploring in is that time, for me, I get lost around. easily and I feel well, like it's really easy to get lost in the town. The maps are confusing for me. <laughs> but then also sure it starts raining like I feel like every five minutes and anytime it starts raining, enemies start spawning. 
Yep. So you have to kind of be a little quick anyway. Oh yeah, I mean when I when I did my um my achievement run, I was like checking the map every three seconds because I was like, yeah. I have no idea where I'm going. Yeah. The maps are confusing. Uh and actually, uh there's a sort of a fast travel system in this game. Oh yeah. I, I say sorta because it is a fast travel, but it, it does require you to do a Where'd bit of go? work for it. Um, you can basically unlock the sewers and use the sewers as a way to move fastest through the city. So basically you get, like, you walk for a bit in the sewers and then you get a loading screen that basically, or a fade in, fade out, that basically gets you to another part of the city. Um, but it actually reminds me of that time that Schmumbler was trying hey to reroute the 100% uh, category um, to see if we could shave off some time out of, out of the old runs. And uh, he couldn't figure out why the quest from uh, the homeless guy in front of the sewers wasn't triggering because he's the one uh, that unlocks the fast travel. Yeah, because you had to have the map the or whatever. Yeah, right? it, it, it turns out that you actually have to pick up the map for that quest to even work at all. It's pretty cool. Um, you but you know, we're speedrunners. We don't pick up maps. We don't need maps yeah. where we're going. So yeah, yeah. It took a while He's to figure out because like none of us had any idea why it wasn't kind of working. Is she dead? <laughs> yeah. Did you kill him? What? No. Of course not. Why would you say something like that? Because she said you're the boogeyman. This kid is very creepy. Boogeyman? What are you talking about? Who said that? She did. She told me all about you. Why is she crying? Who is she? I don't know. Just some girl. She's always sad. But, but she, she knows, knows things. things. What kind of things? Things about the boogeyman. Look, I won't lie to you. Grown-ups tell kids there's no such thing as monsters, that the boogeyman's just make-believe, and there's mm. nothing hiding under their beds. You're gonna see in a cutscene later because who I've the kid is talking about, and at, by this point in the game, actually, but you've not, probably seen them, it already at least boogeyman. once, if I remember correctly. Now, what do you say to um, get out of here? Or maybe I'm wrong, I don't remember. But, um, yeah, I'm trying to, I don't remember. She she's a little girl, right? But the game never explains to you who she is. Never. There's a little hint that you could say maybe, which is gonna be in a sliding section a little bit after this part in the monastery. But there is actually no clear-cut indication that that little kid is actually Anne when she was a child. Um, that's made clear. Oops, I muted myself Not halfway, yet. sorry. Uh, that's made clear in the comics. Uh, in the comics, you see Anne as a kid, and you can associate her with the kid that you see in the game. But, you know, from, from, from a game's perspective, when you're playing it, you're like, who is this kid now? Like, who is she? You have no idea. Yeah, we were talking about before that, like, um, it seems like the boy's meant to be, like, Murphy, maybe? Like, is it's, that, like, his, like, innocent side or something? It's, he's, it's like, him having a, a dialogue, like, an inner dialogue, but it's, like, outer or something? Again, it's still not specified anywhere, but yeah, it's, a, it, it's a... It's it's as good as guess as any, you know, at this point. What the hell? Shit! Oh, my favorite oh part. Oh my goodness, come on, please. please no, Murphy. Murphy. Please. <laughs> Murphy. Murphy, buddy, buddy. <laughs> I always call him buddy because I, to prevent myself from saying like meaner things to him. Like Murphy, buddy, let's go. I, I will give you permission to be mean to Murphy at least a few times during the day, you know? <laughs> So in this part, actually, from a casual perspective, the game expects you to... Um, there, there's a rope on the column on the left. The game expects you to burn it with the, with the lighter. 
but and I didn't find that out until I saw the speed run. You can actually just cut it by doing this, like by doing a normal attack. Because you know, until then I always played the game casually, and the game is kind of like, yeah, you know, it's a puzzle. Just use your lighter. You can interact with the rope. And yeah, this is one of those times when you can't push the button too fast. And then Schmumbler pointed out at the end you can push down the A and X at the same time and the game will just like automatically switch it from the A input to the X even if you're pushing both buttons at the same time. What? So this is a little bit of tech. He is dropping the X at the same time as picking up uh, the rhyme book because that prevents the a diary from opening, the diary that Murphy keeps from opening and showing details about the rhymes. It doesn't save much, but like I said, even earlier, at the, we're at a point in a game where we'll take anything that we can get. Yeah, every second is precious. I'm gonna shoot uh, this screamer here to prevent a cutscene from starting up. Uh, like it shows also... her walking down the hall. Yeah. Sorry. No, I wanted to say that you. She also like Jill also dropped the axe earlier, um, because we're gonna pass from there later on, and we can pick it up again. But for the moment, we need this uh, harpoon kind of thing to take the ladder down so that we can proceed with probably the best puzzle in the game. And then we um. just gotta rub on the ladder until he decides to <laughs> climb it. <laughs> There's no actual input for climbing ladders in the game. You just have to rub on them until Murphy decides to climb them. And unfortunately, there's a lot of rubbing sometimes. Yeah, sometimes you lose a lot of time trying to climb ladders. Sometimes you lose a lot of time when Murphy decides to climb back down the ladder after you've gone up it, so... He just kind of does whatever he wants. This is a very simple puzzle. Once you know the solution, you just have to do things in a specific order. Um, although I'm not going to lie, there were times where even after 20 runs, maybe I had that weird moment where I forgot to do something. Yeah, I forgot you know? to turn the record player on yesterday when I was practicing. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it totally happens, you know. It's like maybe you're spacing out or you're not even thinking what yeah. you're doing. It's, you have to space out a little bit with this game sometimes to just survive through it. Disassociate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And now the stage becomes a lot. And we're actually gonna be in a forest. I always thought this was very cool even the first time I saw it. It's it a is cool a idea. cool concept. Yeah. It runs very badly on the 360. <laughs> oh, you, like should, you should see on, on a PS3. <laughs> oh my gosh. I think that runs badly on a 360. Uh, no, the game is played, uh, is played on easy. Um, well, well, I mean, obviously because enemies are faster and this is, uh, sorry, enemies are faster, enemies are weaker and this is any percent anyway. And also because changing puzzle difficulty to normal or hard doesn't exactly makes the puzzle harder. It just moves things around for the most part. So, for example, in, in this situation, yeah, uh, with the puzzle that Jill is doing right now, um, on normal and hard, you would have more cubes to turn. But the way yeah, the this puzzle, puzzle is works random. is exactly the same. Yeah, it's always the same like picture result, but then the amount of times you have to turn the blocks and stuff is completely random. So sometimes you'll get like, there was one time I was doing it, I swear I only had to turn like three blocks or something. It was like the craziest RNG I've ever seen. <laughs> I was like, whoa. But yeah, sometimes you get really lucky and sometimes you get really unlucky there. Sometimes Murphy likes to run into the room again when you approach that door. 
This is another forced walking segment. We'll pick our axe back up. Our trustworthy, unbreakable axe. Yeah. Forest walking. Not gonna hurt you. That's the main reason why we get the DLC axe, by the way. It's because it's unbreakable. Any other item in the game can break and will do so quite easily. And specifically here in the monastery, uh, that door that she um, uh, destroyed at the very beginning, it's programmed so that literally any item that you use to break through the planks is gonna break. No matter what the durability is on that item, it's gonna break. Because the game wants you to go through an extra section where you have to get a new axe, basically. And yeah. that extra section is kind of cool, but it's so long and it loses so much time. And, you know, we have a way to get the DLC axe with us, so why not? The very first time I made a speedrun of this game, actually, I, I botched that because I did have the right code and everything and I opened the locker but I picked up I, I pressed A too many times so I did pick up the axe but then I picked up again my axe that I had before oh no and I didn't realize until I got to the monastery so yeah my first run was including the extra little part with the with the rec yeah. axe recovery and the uh, the DLC codes for the, the items that you get out of the locker are tied to your like Xbox account. So like I moved like so like my game save files in the cloud, I deleted all my game save files because it had my original code from when I first started the game. I I made a separate Xbox account to run this game on so I could put in a new locker code because it's literally tied to your account. You can delete all your save files, all your cloud saves, everything and it still will give you the same locker stuff and you have to just like make I, I made a new account. <laughs> to run this game. Except for the last time when you were in the race yeah. with Schmumbler. That Did you ever wild. figure out what happened? Like I don't know what happened. Somehow I managed <laughs> to reset everything in the game. It was crazy. I don't know how I did that. That was weird. Uh, so, um, Oh My Queen was on the couch when me and Schmumbler were racing this game a few months ago. And somehow when I started the game, I reset every single setting in the game and I ended up running it on normal. There was like no object highlighting, so I lost the axe after I threw it um, and the locker was reset. I don't know how I did it. Uh, there's going to be a loud noise in here, by the way. Yeah. That run was very entertaining, by the way. Like, it was pretty funny. It, it didn't go <laughs> as planned under many aspects, but you know. If it's still possible, it you have to check it funny. out because it, it's it was very funny. I've never heard of Book of Memories. Can we do that next time? I don't think you will find anyone that will answer yes to that question, I'm afraid. <laughs> oh, of course I picked the right one. <laughs> Someone jokingly told me uh, the other day, now that I'm not going for PB attempts, I'll get the right one every time. <laughs> so, so far, it's true. <laughs> uh, so this is like a there's like a 50 50 chance of picking the wrong body and losing like a, the entire run if you're on like a really optimized time mm, the way that puzzle it's works is that normally line. you need to push the, the door now. stretchers yeah uh, <laughs> stretchers. <laughs> sorry uh, i forget words um the stretchers through the x-ray machine to check which monster has the key in the in their stomach, but that takes an insane amount of time. So what we do is we simply just wing it. Um, the issue is that the first one is always gonna be wrong. No matter what you do, the game is gonna punish you if you try to grab a key uh, at, on the first attempt. But the second attempt, you get a 50-50 chance of getting the right one. So, run. yeah. I say it and you open the door. That's how it works, right? And this is a very silly cutscene, in my opinion. I said, because if 
Um, if you remember uh, earlier, the kid was like, I'm not gonna let you pass because you could be the boogeyman. You have to tell me a rhyme to prove yeah. that you're not the boogeyman. And we picked up the rhyme book. Like we went through half of the monastery, uh, literally just to get the rhyme book. And yeah. Murphy is there trying to remember the rhymes from a rhyme book that he read once instead of opening his diary, <laughs> pulling out the page out of the rhyme book and reading the rhyme and save the kid from it. Yeah, I mean, on top of that, earlier he was holding the like little things between... Or you, you assume there's glass there. There's no glass there because he was holding that earlier so he could actually just reach his arm in and boop, boop. <laughs> but he doesn't. Nor does he try he to read the rhyme off of paper. He tries to say it by memory. Yeah. <laughs> I'm guessing it's supposed to look like uh, the bars of a prison cell. I, I'm guessing that's why it's made that way. I don't know. Maybe. But yeah. it's also possible that they just didn't think it through, to be honest. And, um, but, but when it comes to the rhymes, at least, I think that they wanted to build up tension. But it's just... It's just not working because we we know that we have the rhyme book, you know. Like, yeah. It's not like we heard the rhyme from somebody, you know, maybe another NPC or stuff like that. We actually have it written down. So. Yeah, he could just read it off the paper. <laughs> uh, Murphy, 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 Murphy. Charlie, I'm sorry. So sorry. <laughs> Charlie. Uh. Charlie. 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 Mr. Pendleton, I have to ask you to leave, sir. We've got everything under control. Where's my son? Where's Charlie? Charlie. Please, Mr. Pendleton, you don't want to be here. Let one of my officers drive you back to the command. So this is when he found his kid Where's dead. Boy. Is he out there? Charlie. Is he wearing the same t-shirt that he's wearing now? Yeah. I wonder if that's why he finds this uh, outfit. Maybe he just doesn't remember wearing it that day. But Silent Hill remembers. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what I was wondering, actually. Like, I was thinking it through. I was like, how is it possible that he's wearing the same outfit? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, this kid with a very, like, very big lungs uh, is Anne. Whoever did the voice acting is a very good screamer, I gotta say. That that scream at the beginning is insane. Wait. Stop running. It's not safe. Damn it, I'm not gonna hurt you. I think this is one of the longest uh, running sequences in the game. Oh yeah, probably. I, I'm thinking that this is probably even longer than the last one at the end. Sometimes you get staggered by this swing. Yeah, I got staggered by it. Most times I feel like I don't, but sometimes you do. It like sets you back a little bit. And there's a little bit of forest walking in here. I can try to get my speed back up here. Nah, it didn't work. And try it over here instead, maybe. I usually go for the bed, yeah. Yeah. It's slightly slower, but it's it works all the time, at least. Yeah. So that's another little bit of tech. Basically, you are forced to walk in the water, despite the water not being that tall. But if you get a little bump, either on that column where Jill tried at the beginning or on the bed, and then you get back into the water, you're gonna have to actually get your normal running speed back. Which again, is something very small and doesn't save a lot of time, but we have to make use of it. There's a little bit of a strat here too, because you want to take a, you want to take damage from these squirters if you can, because when Murphy is so much damaged, either in the chase sequences or in like a boss fight, he runs faster. I only got hit once. 
so that kind of sucks. <laughs> I feel like I try to usually get hit twice. Uh, knock this over. This is the only the second cage I knock over in the game. I'm try to run around this thing. Maybe you do it to, that to was speed enough damage it. to give me a speed boost. You do Sorry, it to speed ahead. it down, right? Not not to, because I, I don't think I ever got insta-killed there. The... Oh no. There's a glitch there though, sometimes where you get caught trying to open the door and he just like won't open the door. I don't know if you've ever seen that happen. Um, I mean, sometimes he's very slowly opening the door, yes. But uh, that he doesn't open the door at all? Yeah, it just no. doesn't open the door. And that never happened to me, I think. And then at that part where I was chasing the little girl to open the door, you cannot open the door until she completely closes the door. So you have to like wait for her to close the door. So you kind of like stop running for like a couple seconds, like just kind of stop, go, stop, go to kind of give her enough time to actually close the door. If you think that those spikes look scary, it's because they are scary. Um, the hitboxes are usually pretty precise, but it can happen that if you move even just like a tiny millimeter too much, you're gonna get insta-killed by them. Which I means... find... Yep. Uh, I find um, when the spikes are going, I can start moving on the last uh, spike, and even if it looks like the spikes are going through them, sometimes you're able to get through, but it's like, like you said, it's pretty precise. Like, whatever the hitbox is for those spikes, I don't know. And see, I still got my speed boost going in this uh, boss fight. It was a little bit slow in the room before it, but it's back since I'm in a boss fight now from being so damaged. Bear in mind that we call it a boss fight, but... Yeah, there's it's not, not really much. There's not very much <laughs> boss fighting in here. Oh god. Am I gonna die? <laughs> I got hit a couple times. Nope, nice. Now I'm gonna heal. And I'm still not running at full speed, because um, I was pretty well damaged, but I'm gonna tank a hit up here. Um, and then heal again, and then I'll be at full health. Because Murphy, um, his speed running depends on your health in this game. I'm gonna tank this hit here, and then heal. It's faster than waiting for it. It's also um, kind of hard sometimes to judge um, how much health you have because the only way that you can understand it within like the game without going into the menus and whatnot is by looking at how many stains Murphy has on his clothes, uh, how many blood stains. Those usually indicate, you know, how injured you are. But if you want to see how, how many HP you actually have. You have to go, you have to press pause uh, to open up the menu and then you have to go, I think, under statistics. And yeah. there you will be able to see how much HP you have in percentage. And so depending on which threshold you passed, uh, you will have a different uh, running animation and the like in most cases. And then depending on whether you're in combat or not, then you're also gonna get either faster or slower depending on the situation. Even though, like, for example, when you're very, very injured, it doesn't feel like you're going way slower, but you actually are. It's very hard to judge it just by looking at Murphy. Um, yeah. But, like, you, you can see the difference only when you actually get the timer. Up, yeah, basically. if you're watching, like, two runs side by side. Like, um, I'll usually... This sounds stupid, but I usually watch my PB run like, it, like I'm running against a ghost car, because I don't do splits. I don't know. I don't feel like doing splits. So uh, one time I was really injured running toward the monastery. Well, not really injured, but kind of injured. 
and I was running against my PB run, and you could just see Murphy just like falling behind and behind and behind. Like I was like bleeding time. Yeah, it's barely noticeable sometimes, honestly, but it it, it makes a difference in the long run for sure. Yeah. And honestly, that's not stupid at all what you said. Uh, I know that uh, other runners do the same and it kind of makes sense if you think about it because you can see if you're having some progress or not and if you're losing time, you also know where you've lost time. So. Wait for this door to open. Oh, I don't need this axe anymore either. No, how could you? How could you abandon her? Relax. Aww. If you actually look at the papers, Get away um, from her. They're like transparent PNG files with like, you can see like square shapes around them and everything. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you've ever I done that. I never noticed that. No. Yeah, I, you can I usually see it. always rush through this part, even yeah. when I'm playing casually, so I actually never noticed that. That's kind of funny. If you're on, yeah, if you're on bad pace, just like stop there for a second, because the lighting effects really make it obvious, like whatever the lighting effects are that are in that room. So this is another very long cutscene. This, this is extremely, my so. least favorite cutscene in the whole game. Thank you for coming to Shepherd. I mean, it's very Mr. long Pendleton. for no reason whatsoever. It, it could time. take way less than it actually takes. This meeting um, could have been an email. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I don't think you do. Um, there's been a mistake. It's it just characters you shouting. Years ago. Yeah, yeah. It, it gives you a little bit of exposition. But we all deal with grief and all it still doesn't really help you understand sure. what's going on over here. Um, but basically, you're gonna see uh, what seems to be a corpse under the blanket, and it's actually the boogeyman that we saw earlier uh, with the kid. Okay. And later on, we're gonna see the face of the boogeyman that. Uh, Continues changing between Napier and Murphy, actually, and that's never explained. It it seems very random when you get here the first time and you see that, and you're like, "What is it supposed to mean?" Um, what's supposed to mean? It's actually shown in the very first like three pages or so of the Anne's comic. Um, but basically, Anne sees Murphy as the boogeyman since the beginning. That's why when she's hanging on the cliff and about and about to fall, she she says, "Don't touch me," because as soon as, as soon as she looks up at Murphy, all she sees is the boogeyman, and she's terrified of it. And it's a pretty cool drawing, actually. I don't know. I really like the style in which the comic is drawn. But You know, this comic could have been a video game. The other way around. <laughs> yeah. And probably a better one. And, uh, I hate this part. They're just yelling over each other, and it's just like. It's the right moment to take a break, you know. Do some more popcorn. You finished the bowl <laughs> from before. Charlie was still gone, and I was stuck in prison. Everything spiraled out of control. It was my fault. I'm just glad this cutscene is near the end of the game and not the beginning of the game. Because, like I said, this is my least favorite one. Like, imagine resetting and having to watch this cutscene every time. Isn't it, Mr. Pendleton? <laughs> Where do you suppose it ends? Oh, I like Off-World Devil's description. It's like a musical without the music. <laughs> yeah. If you want it. Um, honestly, yeah, the, the when I got the comic book the first time, it really opened my eyes on so many things. I was like, oh, so that's why, you know, on on so many situations. Yeah, I need that to get a copy of it in the game. 
honestly, they're not that hard to find. So I, I don't think you're gonna have a problem. And like I said, you can also pay for the digital version if you prefer. I mean, it's definitely gonna be easier to show on stream if you ever want to, because like I had to like held up my hold up my copy to the camera <laughs> and hoping that um, people true. could see, you know. Um. Vistro <laughs> in chat keeps talking about olives. I do not like olives. <laughs> oh, they're memeing on me. Do you like I olives? Like, uh, not on their own, but um, does it does does Charlie? anyone understand Charlie? what it is if I say oh, focaccia? I'm, I'm guessing no. But <laughs> um, in Italy, we make. Um, a type of let's call it a tall pizza um with a slightly different dough from a normal pizza but it's ah. basically usually <laughs> I find the nail gun sorry <laughs> it's fine it's usually with olives and i like that you know with the with the pizza kind of thing but olives on their own are a bit weird i don't know Yeah, oh a lot God, of people everyone... in the chat are saying you're lying. They're from my stream and they're trying to mess with me. Yeah, that's why I believe them, you know. They, they're they probably more truthful about it, you know. Wow. I'm gonna send you a jar of olives for your birthday. It's uh, no, I thought about doing it as a donation incentive for like a, a marathon run or something, but I think I might actually throw up if I ate one. So I'm like, I don't think I should do that. I don't know. Sorry. I would have to test it out first because I don't think they want me vomiting on a marathon run for charity. <laughs> well, they don't gross me out that much, I gotta say. Um, so yeah, maybe maybe not. <laughs> Let's find something more bearable than olives, I guess. Hey, everyone in chat knows focaccia. I'm sorry for assuming that you wouldn't. It's just that I, I've met a lot of people from a lot of different countries and whenever I said the word focaccia, everyone was looking at me like, what the hell are you on about? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I don't know what focaccia is supposed to be. So the the um, keychain that he just picked up is the key to the boat that, uh, well, DJ Bobby Ricks was telling us about a boat earlier that he had. Um, so we just found the keychain to uh, DJ Bobby Ricks's boat. Which is ironically called freedom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of the like um, stuff in this game is kind of literal. There's like clocks everywhere, the keychain says freedom. It's like, we get it, he was in prison. Doing time. We get it. I'm so fascinated. Sorry. No, go ahead. I was no. Nosing. I was. I was just fascinated by the argument about the olives going on in chat because, like, olives are pretty normal in Italy, right? Like, we put them on on a lot of things, and you can buy them made in different ways and different types of olives and stuff. And actually, the first time that I heard of somebody being extremely grossed out by olives, it was Catlink. And I always found it amusing. And now I'm finding out that there's actually like, you know, there's such a split between people that like olives yes, and people that hate is. them. It's like, there's no way in between. <laughs> uh, yeah. We have We're like an ongoing faction meme war. about like pickles versus olives. Yeah, I don't like pickles. See? We're, we're even now. <laughs> I am shooketh. So yeah, now we're just uh, heading down to... Uh, that ladder that I climbed back there, by the way, is one of the most notorious ladders for accidentally climbing back down the ladder. A little bit like the window earlier on in the game. Yeah. Uh, up here, when I hit this switch, watch on the side of the building. So I'm going to show you. There's this axe over here against this wall. See the shadow of the axe? Watch on the side of the building. The shadow of the axe is also on the outside of the building. <laughs> it's 
see it. <laughs> I love that. I love that little tidbit there. Uh, hello? Doors are hard in this game, it's fine. Yeah. If you, um, um, go ahead. if you have any, uh, this is for chat, you know, if they ever are gonna play this game and, you know, get all the achievements to get part, to become part of the cool kids club. Yeah. Um, this is actually the last bit of the game where you can get most of the achievements. Uh, because once we get on the boat, we're gonna be go to a new area and there's no way of coming back. So especially if you have side quests that are still ongoing, you have to finish them before getting up on the boat. Um, another thing is that uh, I like to use up any extra first aid kits that I have, which is what I just did. Because um, once you go to the prison, you would think the game resets your health, but it doesn't. You carry on with however much health you had before that. So you use up any extra first aid kits so that you're at full health once you get to the prison. Because once you get on the boat, it's another one of the points in the game where it makes you drop all your items. So you won't have the health kits, but you'll still have like the lower health. So just use them if you use them if you got them. Look at that wonderful sunset. It's a nice day for a little little cruise. I think I would have been happy if the game ended here, you know? Just like a, a weird RPG horror where you have some side quests and then you just leave. <laughs> yeah, this is the end. This does seem yeah. like a good ending, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, it does, you know? Like, <laughs> Until... They could have just made this... <laughs> The UFO <laughs> ending, you know? Like the boat gets oh. captured by a UFO really or something. That would have been great. <laughs> After everything you uh, saw by the way, the everything comic everything explains also you this, because it feels like Anne is coming out of nowhere, and she kind of is, but basically... Yes. After that part where Turn she's in the cage around. with DJ Bobby Riggs and they get um, assaulted by the monsters, yeah. they, the cage actually falls into the water. And Bobby kind of drowns easy. and lets himself we get dragged down in the water, business, but she doesn't. I. I um, no she gets another memory of her father, and honestly. but a, kind of like anymore. an angry vision There's of her no father, where back. it's basically trying to convince her that she has to get her revenge. So we can assume that it's not really her father, but just probably the city sending her some signals or something. But basically, she she just gets out of the water. And she's in the water when Murphy's passing by with but a boat. But she's completely dry. You want me to finish this? Look, I, I'm trying my best over here. Okay? I'm just kidding. I'm sorry. Don't don't question it. She's very wet in the comic. I, I can guarantee okay. you that. Okay. The comic is the canon version. Yes. I mean, I I I think so. Honestly, it would make sense if it is. How's it going, Murph? Heard you're gonna be leaving us soon. What do you want, Sewell? You weren't thinking of leaving before you paid back my favor, were you? Napier. <laughs> what am I talking about? Of course you're gonna keep your end of the deal. You're a real stand-up guy, Murphy. Parole report says so right there in black and white. A model prisoner, right? Sure would be awful if they found out about what you did to that child bugger and bastard, though, wouldn't it? I mean, shit. That would ruin everything, wouldn't it? What do you want me to do? So I don't know how much it, anyone is following of the story at this point. Um, I got another one for you. But Who is it? basically, about the details, Sewell cupcake. is Just take manipulating like before, Murphy we'll into square. pretty much doing whatever when he wants to. Be a little um, he was the one that the gave Murphy the chance to so no one's gonna uh, beat up Napier. Just like and so, time. you know, he's kind of like, I and did then, you a favor, oh, do me a favor as well. Next. Unless, and course, uh, <clears> basically, he's asking him to beat guy. up somebody else for him. He deserves it. And oh, he insists that this no other person idea. deserves, it. He deserves it. Now, how we're going to see that later, so it's a bit of a spoiler, so, but it is necessary um, say, to explain the next part. Because at this point, you should already have the files that make you understand what's going on but we're not reading the files of course 
So basically that person that Sue is talking about is Frank Coleridge, Anne's father. So basically he wants Murphy to beat up Anne's father because Anne's father is actually a just, um, you know, correctional officer. He's trying his best to rehabilitate prisoners while Sewell is the exact opposite. And Frank forwarded an actual official complaint um, for Sewell and his behavior, and he's basically trying to get Sewell fired. Um, but Sewell feels like he's, I'm guessing, too much in a good enough position to um, just let that happen, basically. Oh, yeah, we call, um, we call Sewell um, Bevan Kaken, like instead of Kevin Bacon. We just switch the... <laughs> I guess it kind of looks vaguely similar. similar, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes there's an invisible door here. Oh, I didn't get it this time. Damn. This time we got Woo! the 80 per- No, sorry. This time we still got the 20%, but the reverse Yeah, that was 20%. the 20%, yeah, because yeah. usually there's an invisible door that, like, blocks you from leaving the cell for, like, a couple seconds. And oh, sometimes the door is not invisible. It actually appears, but that also doesn't happen every time. Uh, are you gonna are you gonna try with the YOLO strat or for the uh, electricity or you're just I might as well I don't know I don't, I don't know what do you reckon do it do it do, do it. it I can pick up um, this extra first aid kit as an extra safety strat just in case maybe I can pick up this extra first aid kit here. There's a bit of a yellow strat coming up. Um, it say what does it save like 10 seconds? Or, it saves like a small amount of time, but it could end your run because <laughs> it can kill you. So it's like, is it worth it? Don't jinx it. It's fine. Don't jinx it. That's fine. Yeah, I got the extra first aid kit, and I always do a really wide turn around that ladder because sometimes Murphy likes to decide to climb back up it. Oh, someone's asking about the numbers on his clothes. I don't remember what the numbers on this outfit mean. Uh, actually, probably nothing. Because uh, the other there, one there was for the other penitentiary. Yes, uh, the, there is something that it's not very clear in the game unless you scuffle through the files. But right now, you're not a royal prison state which is the prison where you were at at the beginning. This is Overlook Penitentiary. Murphy oh, was right. never in Overlook Penitentiary at any moment. So I don't think it's explained why he gets this specific number. Um, but, but that's what the OP stands for. It's just Overlook Penitentiary, basically. Here there's a chance for an extra enemy to spawn, which hopefully doesn't happen. <laughs> oh yeah, he did I spawn. Thought, nice. I thought no, he was... Don't, uh... No, don't punch me! No, let me go. Oh god. Help! <laughs> I feel like usually if you like wait on the side there, you can like run past him. That was... Uh, it know. depends though. Like, it's always the same, the same situation where enemies are so unpredictable. <laughs> This can also kill you if you mash it too fast. Yeah. Oh, you made it. Oh, I, I'm gonna go back through it though. Uh, like, I think, I'm not gonna turn the power off. No, but I think it might be disabled when the guy gets stunned by it. 
No, I don't think so. So this is the new quarter that I pick up that I was talking about. Yeah. But I'm gonna pick up this quarter instead of the one later on in the game. Because I feel like it's faster. Oh, um, very loud volume. Oh yeah, there's gonna warning. be another loud jump scare. In like this it's room very in a loud. Bit. I'm pretty sure that they didn't even plan on making it this loud, to be honest. I think it just happened. <laughs> oh, and this is like another bit of like loading RNG. This is all just mass loading here. Oh, yeah, it's still going. Okay. I I eluded myself. No, that's fine. Got an extra yeah. first aid kit. Uh that, I feel that like if, if I do get thing. hit, if yeah. I do get hit, if I stop, then I can go past it. But I feel like if you get hit and you try to keep try to keep running, you'll get hit by it a second time and then you die. <laughs> uh, go ahead, sorry. No, I just wanted to say like how much damage you Guards took from that hit. Uh, that it's very, down. it's a very risky strat and it's very hard to pull off. Yeah, you take a lot of hit uh, damage from that. Oh, somebody's saying that you never warn people in your streams about that loud jump scare. Bad joke. What? Job. I always yeah. warn people. Who said that? <laughs> That's Paramount. She's trolling me. I always <laughs> warn them. I always say it. <laughs> yeah, I started doing that too because I realized that that sound is very loud. And, you know, some people might just be chilling after yeah. like an hour and a half of cutscenes, you know. So this keypad has a very hard password. Oh my god. Two, three, four, five. <laughs> Just dance the Macarena. So normally you would pick up that quarter in the... There's a quarter in the corner of this room, but I skip it so then I can... Look, I'm already like at the, the thing. Yeah, this is a pretty good strat, actually. I, I need to remember this. I love your butt emo, that's a good one. <laughs> I I got it done specifically for this run and for this part of the run. I, I love it. <laughs> it's so well done and it looks... It, it, it looks, looks better like than very... his actual butt. Yeah. Because <laughs> his actual butt is like... Oh, I, which is coming up, my burger emo is because of the trucker burger and Resident Evil 2 remake and because of these oh, giant yeah, yeah. juicy prison burgers. Look at these burgers. There's This guy has two burgers on his tray. They're gigantic. Look at those burgers. Beautiful. Three patties. Those burgers have three patties on them. I, I doubt that prison food is like that, to be honest. <laughs> it's I'm not like, an expert not, on this. There's subject. no way. Uh, that, so I think this, that's why the other people are trying to fight, because they're like, I didn't get any juicy prison burgers. <laughs> they all just start rioting. It's actually one patty per prisoner, so they have to like just kind of split the burger <laughs> in three parts. <laughs> Oh, man. Um, this part is actually very annoying. Um, because yeah, I got memed here on my PB. Yeah, you have to put the access card in there, but the door doesn't open right away because of a malfunction. So you have to wait. How many seconds was it again? I feel like it's about a minute, but I kind of wonder if it's like mass loading too. Like I, I feel like sometimes it's faster or slower, but I could just be like not counting right. I don't know. I'm not counting right now anyway. So I don't know. But yeah, you just want to try to avoid the enemies until the gate opens. But if you try to go to the gate too early, sometimes you'll get like stun locked by like all the enemies like crowding you. And just gonna the, worst, it safe. Yep. the worst the oh. worst is actually Oh no. I got stuck That's on bad. that um column. And then he did that thing. Yeah, it's fine. The absolute worst that can happen is if you get hit while passing through, it can happen that the game freaks out and it reverts your position. So you're still doing the animation of passing through the gate, but on the other way. So you're basically passing through the gate just to go back to the dining yeah, hall. Yeah, he goes back in. It, and this, it's very this, hard. It, yeah. Oh, sorry. 
no, 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 guy no, here, it's... you don't see him on the Xbox One. This is one of the other guys that, like, you don't don't really see him, but sometimes you do get punched by him on the Series X. I tried to kind of rotate the camera a little bit, but... The first time that that happened to me, I was so upset. I will be honest, because I was also <laughs> on a good pace, and I was like, what is this? Yeah. And random moments screaming at downpour. Those happen yeah. very often. Murphy! <laughs> what are you doing? Like, but most of the times, I will be honest, most of the times I take it, you know, with philosophy and I'm chill and everything, but then you find that weird bug that happens once over. every 100 runs and it kills your run for a reason or another and you're like, you know, I just the lost game? two hours yeah. of my life, <laughs> you know? I just think the game is sentient. It just knows. The game yeah. decides when you can PB. It's not up to you. Like I said, you need karma points for Murphy, otherwise it's not gonna work. I like how he's just walking it off here. Like, you can clearly yeah. see that there's the entity thingy just popping off. Um, so while she's doing this running sequence real quick, um, Last mention regard in regards to Anne's story, uh, but what happens is basically that Anne in the end gives up and decides to uh, satisfy the request of uh, Ryle's state uh, penitentiary warden, and she basically, you know, effectively cheats on her husband um, by doing that. Uh, you can actually see her in the comic wearing a nurse outfit very similar to the one that Eileen has in Silent Hill 4. Uh, so I'm guessing it was a little throwback for them. Uh, maybe like a little Easter egg or something. But like basically it shows you the extent that Anne was willing to go just to get Murphy under her watch. And you know, she, she gets that. She does get Murphy to be transferred, like we see at the beginning of the game, but in doing so, she loses literally everything and everyone she has. Because people find out what happened, her husband finds out, um, he understandably divorces her, and she's basically left alone with, um, with her own anger and sorrow and crave for revenge, basically, and to take it on Murphy as soon as she can. Um, another one of the things that's different on a continue versus on an actual run is the timing on those spikes and that little crevice thing. If you are practicing this part of the game and you're practicing off of a continue, the timing of those is going to be different than how it is on an actual run. So it's like <laughs> you can't really practice that exactly. Okay. So this is the elevator. The famous uh, elevator? Yeah. <laughs> so if you hit the enemies as soon as they basically, they are basically hittable, so the doors open and stuff, and you knock them down, you don't need to do the entire sequence where you basically kind of like um, repel them away from the elevator, because that would be very long to do. So we want to get, get them away as soon as possible. Um, this was like the old strat for this was to simply spray and pray in the sense of you would you wouldn't even like use the actual aim in game you would just let the auto aim do its job and hope that Murphy uh -huh. would hit the right targets which was not optimal at all um, and this works way better but sometimes you can still be very unlucky and the enemies might get up again or behave in an odd way and you would still be wasting time on the elevator. Yeah, I like that first screamer on the floor above. I had to shoot her twice because she didn't really go down after the first shot. Oh no. Whew, okay. Not too bad. really need to pick this up. I'm gonna pick it up anyway.
because I did pick up that extra one, but I don't know. It's better to be safe than sorry, you know? Especially given how unpredictable this game can be. Yeah. This is not really a marathon safe game, <laughs> I gotta say. Uh, unless you well, want to take it has all of the... Yeah, yeah. I guess. Like, uh, I did one marathon run of this and I died on the water, the first water slide. <laughs> so that was fun. Oh, there's like, like I said, there's like the checkpoint right there, so... Mm -hmm. It was just funny when it happened. It makes for a good meme. The entire game makes for a good meme. Yeah. <laughs> that race with Schmumbler was a big meme. <laughs> it was oh awesome. God, that though. was so good. It was. Oh my god, I pushed it too early. This is another part where the game forces you to lose all of the stuff you have with you. Aside from, you know, key items. But... Oh yeah, like that's what I that's what I was saying at the beginning as well, off world devil. Like it honestly feels like the right protagonist should have been Anne. Not Murphy at all. He's a way more compelling character overall. And she has various reasons to be in Silent Hill. Like from a you know, from a Silent Hill lore point of view, let's say. That's right, you ugly bastards. Back off! Can you do it in one go? Yes. Mm. The the timing for this is actually very tight. Even from a casual point of view, I remember the first time I had to do this, it took me a few attempts cuz oh, you yeah. have to be very fast in in pressing everything over there. It was fun, Schmumbler. You had fun. Come on. <laughs> I said the race was hot garbage. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it was so good, though. Oh, my gosh. Oh, hello, Murphy. Oh, my gosh. You have to maneuver him off camera in this puzzle like four times, and that was unfortunate. <laughs> that is not the direction I was trying to get him to go, but that's fine. If you get mm -hmm. hit by these blades, it does a lot of damage. <laughs> you might be tempted to, like, risk it and try to go fast or something, but it's like... <laughs> yeah, it's not worth it. They're so dangerous. I like the fact that they put the little circles on the floor, though, to make you understand, you know, effectively up until yeah. where they get, you know. Paras of Light has a theory about the current situation. Uh, they say, I've always sort of viewed this game as Murphy's Silent Hill was the orphanage, the rest of the game is him traveling through the other people's Silent Hills, which I thought was a cool idea. And normally I would agree with you with the fact that it's probably a cool idea, but there is, in my opinion, there's not really much to sustain it. Like, Okay, you can say that most of the game is actually Anne's version of Silent Hill, but what about DJ Bobby Riggs? What about Howard? Howard is never really explained. Is he supposed to be a guide? You know, a little bit like Pyramid Ed was for James, although a very different type of guide. Um, uh, is are you like JP? Okay, you know a little bit of backstory of JP. You know why he's, he is what it is, but especially knowing the contents of the comic, I think that that, theor that theory is not very plausible. Um, 
I, I, I see you are having a moment over there. Ladder memes. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> ladder memes. Hello. I'm just, I'm just distracting people from no, rubbing you're good. against the ladders. <laughs> it's, it's kind of funny. I did, they did give me a pretty big speed boost, but now he doesn't want to go back down the ladder. Murphy. Buddy. Sometimes I feel like this ladder helps to push the A button, but does anything ever actually really help with ladders? I don't know. 80% of the time, every time. This part is very annoying because she has to get these guys down. Otherwise, they won't let her open the door. Opening the that door... That literally never happens. ...is Hello? very slow. And they're gonna stop you. And it resets This guy's back. gonna get back up, I already know, because yeah. I feel like... Uh, oh, was that enough? I was trying to hold down the button and he only did like a little attack. I was like, I don't know what's going on. Whatever. Let's just go. Maybe I can open it all the way. No, 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 no. Oh my god. Is it open? No. No. Help. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Is the other guy gonna get up now? <laughs> Uh, it's okay. This part of the game is very meme -y. And it's so I, close to the end of the game. It's like, can you imagine losing a run here? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I totally can. Yes, I know that. Uh, yeah. It's rough. Okay, so I'm going to heal up. I like to be all the way healed up before this uh, chase sequence so you don't die, because you can die in this chase sequence. This is another one of those chase sequences where you can get an insta-kill uh, when you're going up the last staircase. Oh, look. The last, yeah, the last staircase. It's very, it's way rarer than the other one, and it usually doesn't happen if you're full HP. Um, but there's still a very slight chance that that could happen, and it's not fun if that happens. I will be honest, I get anxious whenever the <laughs> the red the red stain comes anywhere near you. I'm like, yeah. <sighs> you know? Because I remember uh, I all the times that it was happening. Uh, squirting enemies actually do like a lot of damage so that's why like I try to go into that area at full heal because I'm gonna tank two hits from them plus however much time I end up getting stuck in the haha -ha ball I like how each one of us has different names for different things in the game <laughs> <laughs> there's no consensus on what you have yeah. to call them just you know do your own thing create your own meme yeah, and then, um, then, like I was saying earlier, when you take damage, it makes him run faster in that sequence and also in boss fights, so then, see, I get a speed boost for being close to the, uh, the boss while I'm at low health. So, this boss is actually not hard at all, but it's all about cycles basically because you have to get on the different towers and blind them and then unplug uh the, the yeah. cord or the electricity i don't know what you want to call it but um you have to get on top of the towers because you have to blind the boss otherwise he's gonna keep attacking you uh and not let you um oh damn is that cycle in that one uh, he's not gonna let you pull out the, the thing. Um, so... 
basically what she was trying to do while passing uh, through the oh, different I corridor. I can never make this one. Uh, it's also it's also to shoot the boss so that he gets stunned briefly and he doesn't land an attack. Because you can stun the boss out of his attacks, but trying to kill the boss, you know, the traditional way by shooting at it, it's not gonna do anything. You actually have to pull the cables out to kill it. Ah, crap. You have to the maneuver boss... him off camera there and that was not good. Yeah. Um, the boss is supposed to be Frank Coleridge, and dead. Somebody was asking in chat. Someone says, you tattoo artists tattoo themselves. Most tattoo artists tattoo their own thighs when they're learning how to tattoo. You have to like practice. Excuse you? What is this guy doing? Man, I cannot wait to get my next tattoo at some point when I can afford it. Yeah, most of the ones I have, it's like I've done like trades with other artists. So like I'll tattoo them and then they tattoo me. Cause yeah, they're expensive. I can offer you a downpour copy for a tattoo. Wait, what? <laughs> if you want, I can give you another downpour copy <laughs> for a tattoo. <laughs> All right. I mean, if you if you come to the states, I would tattoo you. You don't have to pay me. But I'm giving Travel's you a downpour already copy. expensive enough. Yeah. Well, you know, is that really should... giving me something? <laughs> <laughs> I almost made the one cycle. I actually, I mistakenly have three downpour Xbox copies. I have two, but I don't know where the second one is because I, I pre-ordered the game when it first came out, but I don't know what happened to that copy of the game, so I bought another one like a couple years ago. Did you ever find the first one in the end? No, I haven't found it, so I don't know where it is. Nice. Nice. I got that one. We got the last Hello, one. camera. <laughs> the camera is very annoying in this Sometimes fight. it does that. When you're going up and down those things, it just spins around. Is that a cat? 5D umbrella gel? Yeah, that's my cat. <laughs> just collect all the copies of Downpour. Yeah. Umbrella Jewels Tattoo Emporium and and Silent Hill Downpour Collection. <laughs> and you oh, do man. only tattoos of Murphy. That's all you're gonna tattoo. You know, if somebody wants a free tattoo, they're gonna get Murphy's face. That's all they're getting. I'm gonna tattoo your emoticon on everybody. <laughs> the butt. At least it looks good, you know. I remember I, I even had somebody complain to me and they were like the butt looks too good. It doesn't look anything like Murphy's butt. And I was like, yeah, that's kind of the point. You know, that's kind of the point. I don't I don't want to have Murphy's butt. No. No, that's not how it was supposed to go. That's not what I Yeah, so this is the big reveal. Murphy? Is that you? Jesus. She's getting, Christ she's Christ getting Christ. pissy. She wants like, to go outside. Yeah, she's like, you've been running down for for already two hours. What are you doing here? Mom! <laughs> two hours and a half now. You told me to meet him. Yeah. You haven't seen him, have you? He ain't answering his radio. Somebody suggested a free tattoo of JP. Are you okay, Murph? <laughs> oh yeah, so nice. Good. Name's JP. What's going on, Murphy? You can just do it as a quote, you know. Yeah, just the words. <laughs> Name's JP. People are like, "What does that mean? Why do you have a tattoo that says name? Your name is not JP." Yeah, it would be very confusing. Mom, you don't get it. It's not a phase. <laughs> to be honest, I've seen worse tattoos, so I think I could live with that. I guess. I'd do it. <laughs> Why not? Do it, you son of a bitch! No. I mean, no. Yeah. 
I guess for downpour it would be no, it wouldn't be worth it for downpour. Never mind. <laughs> You know, it's never man, worth it for downpour. Man, my dad. Didn't matter who you were, family, friends, even prisoners. He treated everyone with respect. Always looking for the positive side of people. I wanted to be just like him. <laughs> you don't understand. Your father treated me like one of his own. I he never... didn't die right away, you know. After you were done, <laughs> doesn't even reach halfway to the top. In that <laughs> <laughs> a, a <fucking laughs> According to JP's math. Did you know that? <laughs> and I had to watch this. You know what the thing is? I usually I'm so tired of this game cutscenes that usually when I play it, I don't even wear headphones. So, and I completely spaced out when, when there's cutscenes. So, I actually don't know all the lines by heart. But if you asked me to recite you any of the Silent Hill 2 cutscenes by heart, which are skippable, then I would be able to tell you. You don't know how many strings I had to pull to get your transfer approved to get you to my prison. Yeah, I, I usually just like kind of disassociate during. I like um, when I was PB grinding, I was doing like 12 to 15 hour streams during the day. So I just turned the camera off. Um, like no webcam or whatever, and then yeah. I'm just like scrolling on my phone during the cutscenes, just like disassociating. <laughs> oh, I was doing that minutes. even with the camera on. I was like, you know, yeah. guys, just bear with me. I mean, so now we're the boogeyman. First time in the game where this happens and it's explained somehow. Where is she? And... Oh, come on, Anne. That's fine. Nice. Not too bad. So are we gonna kill her or are we gonna spare her? Oh, we should have done like a vote or something. I don't know, what do you want to do? I kill her whenever I don't get a PB, which is very often. So up to you. Your call. Okay. Um, I'll spare her. Time is gonna be very soon. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's true, actually. Uh, time now. When you make the selection, that's not a bad time. No, it's pretty good, actually. For a marathon <laughs> run, especially. It's pretty good. Yeah, GG. Thanks. Yeah, one time I was uh, doing runs of this and I actually had just like YouTube videos playing no. in the corner. <laughs> I won't do it. You have to keep yeah, yourself entertained somehow, you know? Yeah. All right. No. Or well, watching the ending here. Do you have any uh, shout outs you want to give to anyone? Jesus, you're pathetic. Um, oh, my queen for commentating. You go through all the Schmumbler. <laughs> for being world happens? record holder. And just you like a <laughs> all around awesome dude. I don't know. I'd like to shout out no, Jill for having me. Of course. No. I'm super happy. <laughs> I was super happy when she asked me. Uh, I'm usually not here at this time because it's now it's like eight in the morning for me. Um, but I, I am off from work this week, so I was able to participate and I'm really happy that I did. But shout out also to Schmumbler, of course. He's uh, an awesome guy, an awesome runner. And he helped a lot uh, rerouting some parts of this game and finding out new tricks for this game. Yeah, we uh, kind of collaborate on strats. It's it's yeah. a nice a little community, I guess. I don't know. The entirety of the Silent Hill community is great. So if anyone ever wants to start any of the Silent Hill games, it doesn't have to be downpour. I mean, you're not gonna be part of the Cool Kids Club, but it's not gonna. It doesn't have to be downpour. But you're gonna find a lot of people willing to help with no problems, including Ecdysis, I'd say. I'm sorry, Frank. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> uh, nice <to> <laughs> it was my fault. As well, if anyone wanted to find you on Twitch, where can they find you? Pendleton. Oh, I'm Umbrella Jill. I'm, so sorry. I'm Umbrella me. Jill. That's it, yeah. <laughs> I forgive you. That's I I'll watch at. the ending uh, here, but I do want to thank you both again for being here. Heck yeah. It was fun. Was now I can uh, shelve this game for a little while, maybe. 
Uh, in case anyone is curious, this is actually, according to the comic book, this is not the canon ending. According to the ca comic book, the canon ending is the one where Anne forgives him, but she goes back to the penitentiary to kill Sewell, or to Over. supposedly, allegedly, I guess, kill Sewell. Oh, okay. I'm okay. I'm on the shore of a lake somewhere. Afraid I can't be more specific than that. Over. It was funny, after I picked to save her, I looked at Chad and everyone was saying kill her, so <laughs> I goofed. Negative. Pendleton's dead. Over. See, then you wonder why your, your chat is trolling you. You're gonna be okay. You never listen to them. You better go. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Give this up to clap. <laughs> I wonder what happens after this, you know? It's like she's lying about it. Yeah. How, like, how does he get back to life, you know? Uh, how yeah. does he do it? I feel like they'd be trying to find his body or something, but they wouldn't find it, so it's like... I don't know. All right. Well, I want to thank you both again for doing the run. Uh, before we wrap on up with the show, does anyone have anything they want to add? Uh, not really. I don't know. I, I just want right. to go to bed. <laughs> Sounds good. Well, hopefully you I both have a great night. I just want it to be over. No. And thank sorry, you both again for watching. Or for, you know, doing the run. Thanks for having Thanks. us. Yeah. <laughs> and with that being said, we're going to wrap it on up for today. And I want to say thank you, everyone, for watching. I got my words mixed up because it's getting quite late. But before we do actually go, uh, I think the graphic will be changing in a moment here. We actually have a big list of games because while Speedruns of the Crypt might be wrapping up tonight, AGDQ 2022 is going to be next week, the night to the 16th. And we have a giant list of different horror games that are coming up on this. Uh, for example, on Sunday, we'll be able to see Dead Space 2. I know Dead Space 1 was an amazing run at the last event, so I'm kind of hoping to see this one, especially with what I know about it. On Tuesday night and Wednesday morning, kind of that, you know, late, early, uh, there's going to be the big horror block, which is going to have a lot of games starting with, I believe, Returnal. I wasn't sure on that one, but apparently it is a horror game. It's like a sci-fi-esque horror-adjacent game. As well, we have uh, some weird dude doing Dead Rising with a bunch of other games coming up as well, like Tormented Souls, Faith. Uh, one I know I like to recommend is Payon. Uh, I love PN and last year's AGDQ, and if you've never seen it, uh, definitely go into it without looking anything into it. It's going to be great. I'm um, especially happy with Eternal Darkness and Kuon. Uh, those are actually uh, GDQ Hotfix veterans. Uh, we had Eternal Darkness on last year and Kuon during the Halloween event, so it's kind of nice to see those on there. As well, we have Typing of the Dead and the big one, RE Village, which will be on Thursday. Anyway, if you're looking for more horror throughout the week, uh, we're going to see all this over here. And we'll be back to, in two weeks after AGEQ. Anyway, I've been your host, Dicus, and I hope you all have a wonderful course of the day and or night, and have a good one.